Dude, we had a long day yesterday. We had a long day yesterday. It was a short day for streaming. It was a long day as a, as a man, as a human being. What happened? Well, like, okay, so after the stream, I was recording a little bit. Then my father-in-law came over and he dropped off my nieces, which we knew was going to happen. But I kind of thought it was one of those, hey, I'm just going to drop off the nieces type uh, engagements. It seems like he was kind of putting that more of a, maybe like I should have like a, a meal and a coffee while I'm sitting here sort of vibe. But the thing is like my Korean is really bad and my father-in-law's English is really bad. So we were just sort of hanging out in the kitchen with each other. And I was like, do you want something to eat? And he said, no, I have coffee. And I said, oh, okay. And then we just sort of looked at each other for like two minutes. And then I said, okay, I got to send an email. And then I walked downstairs and I just sat in my computer chair for like five minutes. And then I came back upstairs and he was sitting there and he was like, okay, I think I'm going to go. And I was like, oh, all right, really? I didn't know what to do. <laughs> and then I picked up my kid uh, from daycare. We had a bunch of, you know, just... Because my nieces are here, we got more prep work. We got to do more grocery shopping, more cooking, you know, getting their lunches set up and stuff like that, entertaining them. So I was unboxing some stuff for the house in a different, in a different part of La Casa. And when I came back uh, upstairs, my nieces were like, Luna pooped. And I was like, oh, good, in the potty. And they were like, no, on the staircase. So I, uh, they're like, I'll show you. And then I was like, okay, it's it can't be that bad. And they're like, look, there's a little poop here because she's being potty trained right now. There's like a little poop on the staircase here. Don't step on it. There's like a little poop on the staircase here. Don't step on it. And then there's a little bit in the hall. And I was like, okay, girls, no problem. You stay downstairs so you don't like run into the poop. I'll clean it up. And then I walked like to get the wet wipes. And in her playroom, there was like, like a mound of, of dung that just looked like a oversized, like Tim Hortons oatmeal raisin cookie. And I was like, girls, you didn't know about this one, did you? Like they were talking about, uh, you know, these little like nuggets of poop on the staircase as if it, it did look like Chibli's pancake. What, what kind of comparison is that? It's an apt comparison. I saw the poop. You didn't see the poop. It looked like a huge oatmeal raisin cookie and it smelled like Tim Hortons. But that's only because the clientele also poops inside of the restaurant. Anyway, so I cleaned all that up. Kate took our toddler into the shower to clean up her butt. She'll tell you the story on her stream. But like, you know, she's washing... It's gross, I'm sorry, okay? She's washing nuggets of poop out of our daughter's butt cheeks. And then the daughter's cleaned up. We put clothes on her. But then Kate has to clean like the hair trap in the drain in order to make sure that she's not draining, filtering water through poop like for the rest of our time living in this house, right? And I was, the, I was picking up the poop with my, not with my bare hands, but like through the thin veneer of bounty paper towels, right? All I'm trying to say is that it, it was a rough night for everybody, okay? And then after that, we both washed our hands immensely. We had our nieces um, mop with a Swiffer. They had a great time with it. They kept, they, they thought it was fun. They were like, clean up on aisle three, clean up on aisle three. Me and Kate were like, I want to fucking die. Um, but they were helpful, which I appreciate. Then Kate cooked a beautiful dinner, miso glazed salmon, asparagus, homemade Korean side dishes, AKA banchan. We all had a fun time. We, we reached that trauma bonding experience where everybody was telling their Rashomon perspective of the poop story. And then I was walking downstairs and I smelled something and I told uh, Kate Emo that I think I smelled something and Kate Emo was making the salmon. She was in denial. And then Kate was like, uh, I was in denial because I was making the salmon. I couldn't smell anything because I was smelling the fish, blah, blah, blah. And then... No problem, right? Everybody's having fun. I put our daughter to bed. While I'm putting her to bed, I'm like, let's go to the potty before bedtime. Her training pants are wet. I say, why are your training pants wet? She said, duh, I peed. And then I said, when did you pee? And she said, at dinner time. Son of a bitch. While we were all talking about the story of when she pooped, she peed her pants 
soaked through her training pants and soaked through the cushion that she was sitting on at the dinner table. <laughs> now, the pee is not as hard to clean up as the poop, but still. Nobody in the history ever thought this day would ever end. Well, guess what? It's not gonna end. Hey, by the way, DL Guiga, are you Midwestern emo on Peloton? I got high on my ride today. I got high fived once. Are you outing me? <laughs> I got high fived once by Midwestern emo. Okay. And I said, that's fine. Midwestern emo, Chicago, Illinois, um, 20s. That's my demographic, but you never know. There's lots of 20s people from Chicago that are probably not fans of mine that ride the Peloton. But then you high fived me as soon as I entered my cool down. And I was like, ladies and gentlemen, we got him. That's DL Guiga. You may think that I have, um, I let the key value pair dictionary in my brain rest. No, no, no. I'm constantly cross-referencing. Also, and I'm not, trying to, I'm not trying to throw shade, okay? But I saw you come out of the gates motherfucking hot. I was like, this mid Midwestern emo person is going to crush me. They were, they were outpacing me by like 10, 20% the first five minutes of the ride. Got to realize you're dealing with a man approaching middle age here. I'm, I'm here for a long time, not a good time. That's all I'm trying to say, okay? You might think because you're 15, 20% up on me that I'm, gonna, I'm just going to roll over and show my belly. Nah, 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 nah. You better maintain that 15 to 20% up because I'm going... I'm like the alien from It Follows or the spirit or the metaphor or whatever, the allegory. I'm basically, I'm a sexually transmitted disease. If you haven't seen the movie, you don't know, but that's an apt comparison. Dude, my nieces are so funny. I forgot what it's like to be a kid. My nieces were saying that there's a kid in their class that's, um, they're getting, so my, my oldest niece is in the fifth grade, okay, or just finished fifth grade. She started in sixth grade. She said there's a kid in her class that's getting all Fs. And we were like, how the heck is, is a kid getting all Fs in the fifth grade? Like, Kate said she moved here, like, to Canada in the fourth grade. She didn't speak a word of English, and she still didn't get Fs in her classes. And then my oldest niece said, yeah, she um, skipped, like, 75 days of school last year. And I was like, what is a fifth grader doing skipping 75 days of school? Like, what, in the fifth grade, like, it's not, what are you going to do? You're not going to smoke weed and play Grand Theft Auto Vice City, you know? And then we were digging in deeper and she was like, oh, she lives like 45 minutes away from the school. So sometimes like she would be too late to show up. And I, we were like drilling in deep here. We were like, what do you mean 45 minutes? Can't your parents drive or can't she take a school bus or something like that? And then our, my niece was like, oh, I think her mom just sort of like gave up on her. <laughs> That's sad. I know, but it's like to hear a, a, a small child be like, yeah, I think that she's basically just cooked already was so funny. I'm like, what do you mean she's cooked? She's 11 years old. She ain't even entered the oven yet. You know, the, the dough isn't even started to come together. Dude just laughed up a storm at the saddest story I've ever heard. Well, I was trying to, I, listen, I, was a, I wasn't actually a nerd in high school, believe it or not. I was just like a normal guy. I was just like a boring guy. I was like the Brecken Meyer of my high school. I was just sort of there, but I never skipped class. But the reason I never skipped class is because there were no tempting alternatives, right? Like my high school literally has a convenience store across the street and like that's it, like a playground. I'm really gonna skip like 10th grade math class to go hang out on the monkey bars. I just never, there was no reason to skip class. Now, in university, there were lots of reasons to skip class. <laughs> so I skipped some classes. <laughs> in high school, there were no tempting alternatives. But a fifth grader skipping class is crazy. I became a class skipper in 12th grade to watch Super Mario Sunshine speedruns. Prezo, it must piss people off that are, like, in your graduating class. Because I'm sure there's some, like, some school and job cells that are, like, really? The kid who skipped... 12th grade English class, four days a week to watch Super Mario Sunshine speedruns is famous now. 
If you're skipping class in high school to watch me right now, you're well, I guess it's like the end of August, so you, it's week one. So, well, you should show up in week one because week one, you're not doing any work. You're, you're forming like those social myceliums that could help you in your life. You should skip like, you know, the first week after the midterm exam or something like that. If you're in university and you're skipping class to watch me, you're not going to listen to my advice anyway. So, I mean, just make sure you sub. I'm smarter than 85% of you. 15% of you wash me easy. There's no doubt about that. I probably make up for it in other categories, but academically, I rinse 85% of you straight up. Doctor over here, I can dunk on your biology. Don't you have uh, a nine o'clock appointment to be 21 minutes late to? Uh, and then your 930 is going to show up at 931 and you're going to have your administrative assistant call them and tell them because they're late, you have to reschedule their appointment for eight months from now. Like, this is serious. I'm a doctor. You need to be at your appointment five minutes early so that we can wait 10 minutes to check you in, have you sit in the lobby for 25 minutes, say, okay, I'll take you to your room now, uh, have a nurse take your pulse and weigh you on the scale, and then sit on that weird butcher's paper for another 25 minutes, then have the doctor come in and say, oh, you got a sore throat? What do you want me to do about it? Go home and eat some soup. Two hours out of your day, no big deal. Or even better, wait, you have a sore throat? You're not supposed to be at the doctor right now. Don't you know there's a pandemic? Get out of here. We only deal with people who are trying to scam us for Ozempic right now. You don't want to fuck with me with the Canadian medical system right now. I've got, a, I've got trauma. I've got resentment. I have a lot of, <laughs> got a lot of backed up emotions related to the Canadian medical system. And if you're in America, shut the fuck up, okay? Well, at least when you get mistreated by your doctors, you don't have to pay out a punch. Shut the fuck up, Ohio. I'll come for you later in the show, okay? Don't worry, America, I'll, I'll change my targeting reticle. But for now, I'm talking about Canada, okay? I went to the emergency room in the UK and I waited there for nine hours and then they came out and told us that the doctors went on strike. You gritting your teeth and being forced to say based as you hobbled out of the hospital because you support uh, collective bargaining agreements that promote labor over, <laughs> what's the other one? Profit? Not profit. Capital. That's it. Sorry. If you go to the emergency room during a doctor's strike, does that make you a scab? If you stay at the Hilton San Jose when the workers are on strike, <laughs> does that make you a scab? Does it? I know that's a yes. Does it change if uh, Twitch booked you that hotel six months before uh, the strike happens and then... <laughs> It makes you a picket crosser, but not a scab. But I didn't even pay for the hotel. Twitch paid for the hotel. I simply benefited from it. Actually, I wouldn't even say I benefited from it because like they were yelling at me every time I went in the front door and I was like, sorry, sorry. Did you see the new saga of the Glizzy Overdrive guy? Did you see Martha Stewart's iceberg? What the hell did I miss, man? I only slept for like six and a half hours last night. I, the, the whole world passed me by. What happened? Okay, let's start with the important stuff. What's, what's Glizzy Overdrive? Or what, what happened to the Glizzy Overdrive guy? Is he okay? He wears a costume now. He upgraded? Martha Stewart is getting slammed on social media. <clears throat> Martha, Stewart is, Mar Martha Stewart is getting slammed on social media for using an iceberg to chill her cocktails. How did she, how did she use an iceberg to chill her cocktails? On a cruise? Wait, dude, wait, 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 Okay. <clears throat> Slash marker, Texas Chainsaw Massacre. I can't believe I have something related to this story, okay? Someone said, NL, did you see Martha Stewart's iceberg story? I didn't. Someone said she's getting slammed on social media for using an iceberg to chill her drink. I said, what are you talking about? Does she own an iceberg? They said, oh, it was on a cruise. When I went on that last Alaskan cruise, day three, you're in Glacier Bay, Alaska, okay? We went on a glacier sightseeing cruise and they were like, hey, once we get to like the return part of the trip, we're going to 
we sell, I think they were called glacier teenies or something, right? Like that. And they're like, we'll get glacier teenies and we're going to use real iceberg ice to chill the glacier teeny. Is that what she's being canceled for? I feel like Martha Stewart would not get a glacier teeny. I think she would get like a glacier cosmopolitan, but let me check. I mean, this seems somewhat similar. Martha Stewart's followers got a little heated about how she chilled her drink. While on a Swan Helena cruise traveling from Iceland to Greenland, Stewart revealed we actually captured a small iceberg for her cocktails tonight. In a collection of several photos, Stewart shared images of an expedition guests took to check out glaciers. Some shots show the icebergs in their natural state. Others show chunks of ice on a bar cart ready to be made into cocktails. End of the first Zodiac cruise in a beautiful fjord. We actually captured a small iceberg for our cocktails tonight. One follower said drinking their iceberg cocktails while the planet is in flames is a little tone deaf. Another said, Martha, the ice caps are melting. Don't put them in your drink. Martha, the ice caps are melting, okay? Don't take ice that exists in the ocean. Take water. Put it in your refrigerator. Burn some coal to run the refrigerator to take the room temperature water and turn it into ice. And then put the ice in your drink to keep it cool, okay? You don't understand, Martha. It's a little tone deaf, Martha Stewart. A representative did not immediately respond to people's request for comment. They're trying to dodge the modern day Woodward and Bernstein. The company notes on their website they adhere to sustainable policies. Is the, am I crazy? Isn't there something about conservation of, of energy here that makes this not relevant at all? Isn't it actually better that she put ice in her drink that was already ice instead of taking water and turning it into ice, which takes more energy? Probably so. I believe so. Yes, yes. Turns out people who follow Martha Stewart on social media don't have a four-year degree in uh, biology from one of Canada's previously top 10 academic institutions that has recently fallen into more ill repute. But anyway, can I tell you that this SAP video hasn't come out yet? Every once in a while, I say something in a SAP video and I get nervous about the response that it's going to have. Twitch is more reasonable than YouTube, which is a scary thought. I was talking about Costco, and I said people are going to hate me for this take, but the actual strat at Costco is once you've had your membership for a while, stop taking advantage of the free samples. That's a generator. The free samples are actually going to ruin your Costco experience because you're going to spend half an hour waiting in line to get a... 30 milliliters of orange juice that you already know what it tastes like. It's, it's the most, it's the thinnest amount of free orange juice, the smallest amount of, of free orange juice one could possibly receive. It kind of gets me more when people are like, they'll wait in like a five person deep line to pick up like, um, like three almonds or something like that. I get that it's free, but you know, like, you know what I'm going to say already? It's not free because you pay with your time. By skipping free samples, I probably save 10 minutes at Costco, which allows me to have 10 more minutes of time at home, which considering the value of what you get out of the free samples is a good price as far as I'm concerned. The one that people are really not gonna like, and I'm not saying they should change prices, but the one that people are really not gonna like is I also said the same thing about the food court at Costco, and this might be location specific, but we used to go to the downtown Vancouver Costco and it would take, you know, if we got a hot dog before we went in or we got a hot dog on the way out, it would take 20 minutes in order to get the hot dog. Hey, whoa, go, go, go. So we, after a certain point, we were like, this is just too much time waiting to get a dollar and 50 cent hot dog. Instead, we would just go get like some McDonald's on the, on the drive home or something like that. Now we're paying a little extra. I think it's an example of the free market actually working for us. We would pay a little bit extra, but we would recover some of our time. But I don't want them to raise the price. I understand that it's like you're not in traffic, you are traffic. The reason that it's hard, to, it takes a long time to get a hot dog at Costco is because of the fact that the son of a gun's a dollar fifty, man. I'm kind of losing it to the person who said, once you get home, you spend 10 minutes making food to get the same amount of energy that you get from the free samples at Costco. You know, it takes 10 minutes to make like a 1500 calorie meal. 
a handful of uh, goldfish crackers or something like that, you can get that shit done in three seconds. Bro is complaining about cheap food? No, where, where was the complaint? It's okay, I, I'm just, wait, I, hang on, hang on. Slash user, not subscribed, no surprise. Sway in the morning, okay. 227 message, messages in chat. First off, a lot of bad takes, for example. Why isn't this man playing Armored Core 6? Yo, Ryan, what is your friend code in Pokemon Go? You, you've missed your chance forever. Hey, NL, any words of encouragement for the peeps in Florida going through a hurricane right now? Oh, no, what, you got a lot of stuff going on in your life right now, okay? I'm, I've decided I'm going to leave you alone. <laughs> You're having a, a hard week. <laughs> I've got advice. Don't play Pokemon Go during a hurricane. Sorry, I only know how to play Cook. My Leatherface game week for real. <laughs> they don't know me in the corner holding a cup. They don't know I'm 34. We know you still li like the arcade fire despite Everything that Wynn Butler got credibly accused of. Who got to do a funeral? Came out when I was 16, bro. I can't unbake that stuff. You can't unbake the cake. I am almost 35. It's true. Can you turn the sound down a bit? Absolutely. When the librarian says turn, turn a setting, I turn a setting. You know something that blew my mind? Somebody said... The librarian was only able to get 20 minutes of usable footage out of Armored Core 6. I was like, it's been, it's only been 19 hours since I finished the stream. That's crazy. <laughs> you're, you're working mighty quick. I should be doing something else. Is someone is, don't, don't, don't fucking touch me. <laughs> don't fucking touch me. Don't fucking... Sissy, sissy, I, I can't take this guy, okay? I can't take, he's too strong, no, get away from me, he's too strong, he's too strong. He knows that he's taunting, this little, this little Chad's taunting me, man. Okay, thanks for the blood. He let me get one. I do appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for your sportsmanship. Well, that's not great. Okay. <laughs> Good victims. Real tough to deal with, for sure. Anyway, I'm just saying. If anything, you should be thankful that I am a rational person. Because the $1.50 hot dog at Costco is an insane deal. I am making your experience better by simply saying I would rather go through the McDonald's drive through because we get our food in 60 seconds versus 14 minutes. It's not as good as Ikea. The food at Costco is better than the food at Ikea. But the Ikea dining experience is better because it's not quite as busy. It usually takes a long time, but it doesn't take as long as Costco here. Where does it take 60 seconds? I feel like almost every McDonald's drive-thru I've ever been through has given me my food. From the time that I take, I, I get to give my order in the intercom to when it's in my hands is under two minutes, 95% of the time. 5% of the time they say, hey, can you pull over into one of these uh, spots? We're out of chicken. And then they come out like two minutes later and they bring the chicken. I went to McDonald's curbside, waited 20 minutes on Sunday. See, that would be the last time I would go to McDonald's. <laughs> if I had to wait 20 minutes and also pay $12 for 10 chicken McNuggets combo, that would be the last time I go. But the one, honestly, the Vancouver McDonald's, they got their A game on. I don't know how they juggle the logistics of the drive through the logistics of the ordering at the counter with the kiosk as well. But then also, like every Vancouver McDonald's also has like a horrific fucked up story like once a week, I'm sure. 
Like there's McDonald's in Vancouver where sometimes Kate would be like, maybe we should just get McDonald's tonight. And then I go to the restaurant and it's like 7 p.m. and the parking lot's empty. And I'm like, what happened this time? One time I walked in and there was nobody in the restaurant except for a security guard. I went up to a kiosk uh, and tried to order food and he was like, it's closed. And I was like, what? Well, the doors are open. The lights are on. The kiosk is on. I understand there's nobody in the restaurant except for basically like a cop, but it's McDonald's, bro. You can't close the McDonald's. It's like closing the water treatment plant. It's the, it's the last, the lender of last resort for dinner. I used to work at an A&W and a coworker found a dead guy in the bathroom once. That's nothing. I went through uh, an A&W drive-thru in Sook, BC, and it took 20 minutes for me to get my onion rings. And here's the kicker. When they arrived, the onion rings were undercooked. It took 20 minutes to under, undercook onion rings, brother? Come on. Doesn't even make any sense. One time at A&W, they didn't frost my mug. I mean, that's, that's madness. That's even worse than the onion rings, which is, I mean, I think we can all agree, even worse than the dead guy. We need a Bubba. I'm not going to be Bubby, Bubba. Hurry, TF up. This worked last time. My leather face game week for real. This guy's typing all this in on his Xbox controller. Average console player, no disrespect. <laughs> to, why succumb? Well, because it didn't seem like they had the toolbox to figure out how to play as Leatherface. So I said, I'm not going to ruin the whole game to just like be like, no, I'm going to be the cook. I only play Anna. I already locked Anna. Like, I'd rather just play the... I'd rather just play the game, and even if the survivors wash us, like, the whole point of the game is to have fun, you know? It's like when you get six of your friends together to play freeze tag, and you lose, you're not like, oh, fuck you. Oh, freezing is overpowered. Oh, they had the perk that allows them to say, uh, if their fingers are crossed when they get frozen, then they, they unfreeze in 10 seconds. They have stealth unfreeze. Like, we're just playing a game here. When do we lose sight of that? Always oh, some kid who... You're playing rock, paper, scissors. He throws a hand grenade. Hand grenade's so insanely overpowered in the meta right now. Problem is, I'm, I'm bad at Leatherface to begin with, but now I have played so much Cook that I forgot what the basement looks like. <laughs> I'm getting my T-Rex eyes on. Dude, Leatherface's stamina is crazy. Cook could never. Now, I know you're, what you're going to say. You're going to say you could rev more. And then it does more damage. Yes, but it also runs the risk of stalling my 4-amp Ryobi. I got full stam again. It's over for you. Holy cow, I got a kill down here. You ain't ever seen anything like that before. So, yeah, I'm playing sensible ball right now. You're right, I got a full blood vial. Maybe it is time to go up there and feed grandfather. If I could just figure out how to get out of here. Hey, I already did my part. We should just like start flaming our team in all chat or something. Right? Cook needs a level. I know, but nobody on my team was willing to change roles. Oh, if Leatherface can't climb the freaking ladder, man. Nobody on my team was willing to change roles. So I had to, I had to suck it up. It is what it is. I mean, I, again, we certainly could have done a lot worse. I just came back and he's leather facing Pog. You shouldn't be Pogging. I did this under duress. It was not my intention to play Leatherface, but the rest of my team was like, please play Leatherface. I'm really good at Hitchhiker. I'm really good at Johnny. Well, here we are. Wouldn't you know it, Leatherface got one kill. What's going on with Johnny? And what's going on with, uh, with Sissy, man? Report, please. Report, team. I'm just joking. They're probably doing their best. I mean, I've, <laughs> I've been a horrendous leather face in the past as well, so I understand. I feel like, is it old, old mother hen or is it chicken little? That's like, I'm, I'm planting the wheat. I'm harvesting the wheat. I'm milling it into flour. I'm baking the bread. Now I'm putting it in the oven and now everybody's like, give me a slice. I'm feeding grandpa. I got the only kill. I'm harvesting blood. I'm waiting for some support here, man. We're checking, we're checking top floor then. Anything going on up here? 
Oh, hi, Mark. Anything? <laughs> this puzzle has been completed. That makes sense. NL, I love you, but sometimes... I'm the only person on my team doing anything! I'm the only person with, a, with, a, with an attack, much less a kill! Okay, much less two kills! <laughs> this door was already opened. Gate still looks closed. Well... Dude, wait, uh, why is Grandpa not gooning? You just fed him like a, a vial. What was in the vial, brother? No wonder I'm his favorite son. Entering Grandpa Overdrive. <laughs> Increasing goon by 7%. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do it like you. That's why he's the GOAT, man. I can't do it like him. Thank you for 150... Mmm, Glizzy, so good. Thank you for 150 Glizzies. Entering Glizzy Overdrive. I just... Honestly... Okay, you got me, Tater Tot Season. You got me. I just... I'll, the, the video is good, but I will also take any opportunity to... Um, just make a robot sound, sound with my mouth. Hey, can I tell you something that changed my life? Not having dinner manners. Now, I am not suggesting that you should like, you know, eat with your mouth open and be gross like that. But I always, I, I love my parents. This is a rare disagreement I have with my parents. I always grew up that you don't start eating until everybody at the table has their food. I think that as a kid, you're just like, that's polite. As an adult, I'm like, that's insane. Because I don't control, especially at a restaurant, I don't control when you get your food. The restaurant controls when you get your food, man. When your food arrives, you should eat it. Because that's the... And I don't care if you eat before I get my food. As long as you don't care if I eat before you get your food. Minus two, minus two. I get it. Like, you live with your parents. But, like, at some point, you're probably going to figure out that, like, you can come up with your own opinions to things. You don't need to just piggyback on what they told you when you were growing up. And you may find yourself thinking differently. Why even go out to eat with people if that's the case? There is... Oh, me. Hang on. I'm going to take my hands off the controller. My chicken tenders haven't come out yet, and you're already eating your Caesar salad? I don't even want to be here anymore. You see what that, that's probably not what you're saying, but that is the vibe you're giving off in that situation. Why even go out to eat in that, in that case? Because you're spending time with friends in a different environment where you don't have to do the dishes. The restaurant should try to time it so that everybody gets their food at the same time. Yeah, I completely agree, but sometimes they don't. Sometimes they bring out three plates and then you're sitting there for uh, five minutes and you're like, well, I don't want to start eating because your food might be out in a minute. Then I look impolite. Just talk to the people while you wait. Nah, brother, just eat your food. Honestly, if your food comes out before my food gets there, help yourself, quite frankly. Your food is best when they bring it to the table. I don't, it would be impolite for me to make you wait to eat your food when it's at the optimum temperature. I'm, I'm a very much a go ahead and eat Andy. I'm not two years old. I'm not gonna be like, you're eating, but I don't have food, so I can't eat yet. Like that's, that's juvenile behavior. The kitchen is responsible for making sure all the food comes out at the same time. Yeah, I know, but sometimes I think my game crashed. No! Sometimes you blow it. That's, I'm not getting it, it's a hard job, I'm just saying. My game guy was cooking! There, in my opinion, people are manners crazy. What is being nice? If you uh, open a door, you should give them one of these and hold the door open for the person that's behind you. You don't have to go, milady, and then step aside while opening the door. But if you've already opened the door, you should... Extend your arm to keep it open until the person gets to the door. That's good manners. Me forcing you to look at your food until my food comes and is a D20 roll, whether it's going to be 15 seconds or like two minutes or five minutes or 10 minutes, like 
That's, I'm, that's not manners, that's just irrational. Just go ahead and eat. I'm not a little baby, I'm not gonna be like, nobody can eat until the oldest person at the table gets their food. Because you know what's crazy is that people are like, it's manners. They say it in the same way that people say like, oh, it's common sense. You know what manners are in Korea? You don't look at someone if they're older than you when you're taking an al alcoholic drink. If you ask a 40-year-old Korean, they would say, it's manners. If you ask a 40-year-old American, uh, American, they would be like, that's the craziest shit I've ever heard. Manners are all things you learn from the culture. But some of that shit was baked into the culture 200 years ago and is no longer applicable. As far as I'm concerned, I'm not gonna be mad at you if your food comes out and you eat before, I'm, before my food comes out. But here's the way it normally goes is there's a, there's a deference, right? Your food comes out early. I say, go ahead and eat. We don't know how long my food will be. Then sometimes they'll protest and they say, no, no, I can wait. And I say, no, I insist. The real spirit of manners is within reason the first person to insist gets their way. To resist an insist makes you the person with bad manners. If you go to pay for a bill and then a family member says, no, I got it, and you say, really, it's no problem, and they say, I insist, you're causing a problem if you say, no, I also insist. The first insister gets priority. You can't insist upon an insist. It's like a DMCA. A DMCA is a shot across the bow. If you counter a DMCA, if they counter that one, it goes to court, okay? It's an it's a, a arms race. As far as I'm concerned, if you respond to an insist with an I insist, then you're being impolite because you're saying your insistence is higher than my insistence. If I use that logic, I can get my way all the time as long as I insist first. Honest question, are you four years old? I mean, getting your way in this case is like paying your bills. <laughs> paying for a restaurant bill. <laughs> like, what are you going to insist upon? That's why I say within reason. Like, if I was going to go out with a friend and I said, let's go to this nice restaurant, and they said, let's go to Chuck E. Cheese, and then they said, I insist, sure, I would go to Chuck E. Cheese with them once. But then if they said, I insist a second time, I'm not asking them to go out again. You the, you're the one who sounds for by making it, by being mad people are waiting for their food. The manners Andes are so annoying, man. I decline the swap, by the way. I'm literally the rational person here. Your food comes out, it's ready to eat. We're hungry, that's why we went to a restaurant in the first place. Eat. There's no rational reason for you to not eat if your food is already in front of you. I would have to be four years old to be mad if you were eating when my plate had not arrived yet. I don't know if it's a North American thing, or it's generational, but I feel like people who are like of a certain age or born in the Midwest are very um, paranoid about being disrespected at all times. Uh, oh, someone didn't adhere to the completely arbitrary rules of the social code. They think they're better than me. Nah, dude, they're fucking hungry or they're thinking about something else. They're probably fantasizing about, you know, what they're gonna do when they're done work looking at work screen and they can go home and look at play screen, you know? It's about being disrespectful to others. You've, I'm sorry to tell you this, you've been programmed by the matrix, okay? The matrix of, of Southern politeness. There's nothing innately rude about eating food that has been served to you, even if someone else's has not been served to them yet. And you're resorting to ad hominem attacks. You're saying you're an idiot, you're two years old. No, 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 this is just, I feel like it's more impolite to be like, there's an invisible wall between you and your food. You can't touch it. You can't touch it. Until the big man gets his meal, until Mr. Big, the, the head honcho, gets his food, nobody gets to eat their food, okay? What if we just share the food that came first? Now you're like overthinking it. If it's an appetizer, everybody shares. If it's an entree, no, I don't get to eat your food just because your food arrived first. That's madness. Hey, your food came out first, so can I have a bite of your steak? I mean, like, if you're my spouse, yeah. If you're my friend, maybe. <laughs> I have to think about it. <laughs> what if they insist? No, you can't, that's the thing. You can't insist upon an impoliteness. You can only insist on, on a politeness. What are you, for? You're not, you're just echoing me, and then you think that it insults me when it actually flatters me. You're, you're using my own rhetoric against me. 
It's my own rhetoric. I made it. It's like you're, say, you're telling Tom York Radiohead sucks. His solo work is better. Okay, thank you. Friends that make me wait to eat my food piss me off. Thank you. There's dozens of, we can go out for, I will, we'll get along. We'll have conversations with each other. I would be pissed off if a friend got pissed off that I took a bite of my food when it arrived, when their food wasn't there. I would be like, honestly, no disrespect, Tim Tebow, that's heavy homeschooled energy. My parents always said you should wait for everybody's food to, okay, bitch, I don't know your parents. Your parents could have voted for Mitt Romney for all I know. Like, I don't, you give them respect because they gave birth to you. I don't know who the hell they are. There's no way you act like this IRL. Well, it's because you don't act like this IRL either. The way that this shit goes IRL is like my wife's food comes out and I go, you should eat. And she goes, really? And I go, yeah, fucking obviously. And then she does because we're like normal people. If I'm at the dinner with like an acquaintance and their food comes out first and I'm like, um, you should eat. And they say, no, it, I'm fine. I say, really, honestly, what are we doing here? Your food's here. Just eat. And they go, oh, OK. Sometimes they say like to placate me. They'll say, OK, I'll eat. And then they don't eat. And I'm like, that's fine. I'm not, I'm not going to put the fork in your mouth. But what do you do if you find a hair in your food? I'll tell you what I do. Eat, I pull the hair out. I eat the food. And I don't tell anybody else at the table. I know some people are very... Um, and I think it makes sense that they're like... They don't want to eat dirty food. Because who, who, you know, given a choice, who would want to eat dirty food versus clean food, right? But me personally, it doesn't bother me. The, I know that the other people probably don't have hair in their food. So as a result, I'm not going to ruin their dinner by spoiling their appetite, by making them paranoid about there being a hair in the food. Take it one for the team, my hero. See, that's it. I don't have unreasonable opinions. I don't know if you guys all went to like the debutante's ball or something like that. The one on the far left is the soup spoon. Then it's a salad spoon. Then it's a salad fork. Then it's a dessert fork. Then it's a... Isn't insisting impolite? Not if you're in a cold war. An insistence is not impolite in a cold war. Because if you didn't insist, then you would just be like, no, I'm going to do this. No, I'm going to do this. No, I'm going to do this. Somebody has to say, I insist. I'm also... <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm... This is going to sound like it's going to hurt more than anything I've said so far. Maybe it's that because I'm disrespected literally like five hours a day, five days a week, and then also kind of ambiently 24-7 in the YouTube comments, I'm very much not worried about being disrespected by people that I know actually respect me, like my in-laws or my friends or my family or something like that when we're out in public. I don't find it impolite if my brother-in-law wants to pick up the check at lunch. If I say, I got it, and he says, I insist, I'm like, all right, brother. I'm not like, oh, he owned me. He fucking owned me by paying for the bill. Implicitly, he thinks I'm poorer than him, and I need to be protected, but I don't need to be protected. I'm a man. I'm the one who does the protecting, even though I'm so fragile that somebody buying something for me hurt my feelings. You know, I'm not like that. That's why I always offer first so that the other person insists you know what that's unethical uh life pro tip for sure always offer to pay at a, at a family dinner always offer to pay for it. like reach your hand out really slowly and be like i got it and then wait for somebody to be like no what are you talking about you got it i got it i got it guys i got it you just go. i got it guys I got it. <laughs> Don't worry. And then you're like, I forgot my wallet. No, no. Hey, guys, I'll pay for the bill. But just so you know, I never tip. I'm going to leave a zero tip if I pay for the bill because I don't believe in tipping, guys. Are you comfortable being complicit in my zero tip? A lot of Andes in chat don't know about the, the arms race of paying for the bill. I have definitely pulled the, um, hey, I'm going to go to the bathroom. And then when I go to the bathroom, go to the front desk and just give them my credit card and say like, hey, I'm going to pay for our table. Uh, what I have never done, because I think that this is insane, 
But I have never done the like call the restaurant in advance and be like, I am a bald 5'10 white guy. Here's my credit card number. If you see me come in like this is use this credit card to pay for the bill, no matter what anyone's. I've never done that. But I have pretended to go to the bathroom and then paid for the bill. But then usually after that, I go to the bathroom because I'm already up anyway. Do you go to the bathroom and then pay or pay and go to the bathroom? I think like in practice, it probably depends on how badly you have to go. But in the average situation, because I'm an adult who doesn't wait until my bladder is exploding to go pee, um, I would probably go to the uh, front desk first. So nobody had the opportunity to pay while I was going to the bathroom. And then I would go to the bathroom. Venmo eliminated this for me. It's different though. Uh, maybe it is, maybe it isn't. Going out for dinner with friends, I still feel like splitting the bill just is like, it, it's normal. Like paying for whatever you ordered is normal. But family, especially with like, you know, a generational um, element to it is a little, it's slightly different. What about not splitting the bill equally? I'm just going to say that that's not a Canadian thing. I'm not going to say it's an American thing. I'm not going to say it's like a European thing. In Canada, I'm sure it's annoying for the servers to have to like itemize the bill. And sometimes they do mess it up, which is understandable. They got a lot of tables. But like in Canada, it's very, very standard practice to just be like everybody's seat is a different line item on the check. And here's all their different bills. Sometimes, maybe like one in 20 times, they might be like, we don't do that. We're just going to split it evenly. And I think that is obviously a lesser value option. Then I have been to some places in America where they're like, we don't split the bill here. And I'm like, usually I'm pissed off because the food is always worth it. Like if you're a, a shitty restaurant, you can't afford to do that, I think. I definitely went to a place in San Francisco that was like, um, we, sorry, we're cash only and we don't split the bill here. And then I was like, well, that fucking blows. And um, then I had the greatest Chipino of my entire life. I was like, this is sublime, you, you dickheads. <laughs> fucking assholes. I get accused of being judgmental and I believe that I am judgmental. But I think the thing is, you're also like as judgmental as me. You're just not as good at it. Like, why are you ragging on people for wearing a shirt with the name of a place that they've been on it? That's like very within the spectrum of human behavior. That's beyond normal. It's extremely common. My ass is more getting rankled by people that like go to an ice cream store. And they're like, hey, can I get a sample of Tahitian vanilla? And I'm like, Little bro, you don't know what vanilla ice cream tastes like? We all know you're going to order the salted caramel anyway. So, like, why are you making the lineup take so long to get through? I, I have... <laughs> maybe this might strike you as an insane take. I wouldn't... Here's my rule. I, my ice cream shop would go out of business. I'm glad that I'm not in an ice cream uh, store. My, the rule at my ice cream shop, if you take a sample of something, you have to order something you sampled. You don't get to take three samples and then order something that you didn't sample before, okay? Now, I'm not suggesting if you take one sample, you're locked in. You can take up to three ice cream samples, but your full order must be the best of the three things that you sampled. You don't get to be like, give me a bunch of free ice cream and then I'm just gonna take the usual. You're wasting everybody's time, okay? Who's sampling ice cream? Everybody in front of me in line at Salt and Straw. Jay, tell me I'm wrong on this one. If there's no queue, that wouldn't happen because my ice cream is to die for. Least favorite Vancouver neighborhood, somebody replied Gastown. I gotta give you a plus two on that one. Gastown, run down, and there's a lot of parts of Vancouver that are a little spicy. Gastown is amongst the spiciest. But most of the parts that are a little spicy, at the very least, have great... I see them. I'm just taken the long way home. At least have great restaurants. Vancouver, or Gastown, does not have good enough restaurants to justify how spicy it is down there. I'll go down to Chinatown. 
I'll go get some bao bay. I'll go to Nam Pen and get some butter beef or something like that. That doesn't bother me in the slightest. I am not going to Gastown, walking down 10 blocks that smell like piss, having my window smashed to eat at the old spaghetti factory? The old spaghetti factory? Are you crazy? Gastown's all tourists looking at the steam clock like the Zerg. The steam clock is very funny. I'm always, listen, because the older I've gotten, the more I've been like, stop getting annoyed by tourists. They're literally just on vacation. Like when I'm on vacation, I'm not like, oh, hey, I'm in San Francisco. Can I get some underground, uh, say, I want to go to the places the locals go. I'm like, my ass is like, let me see the Golden Gate Bridge. Let me see Alcatraz. Let me go to that, you know, science museum, whatever. It's the Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus, whatever it's called. Let me go down to the Embarcadero, you know. Let me go to North Bay and have the best Chipino of my entire life, right? But it is funny in uh, Vancouver when people are looking at the steam clock and like, it's styled as if it was built in like the 1800s. The shit was literally built in like 1972 and doesn't even run on steam. It's like it runs on kerosene or something like that. And then what's, what's the appeal of the steam clock? Once an hour, it goes... And it, steam comes out of it. That's it. That's, and that's one of Vancouver's biggest tourism attractions for sure. That's why I always say, like, I, I think Vancouver is a nice city to visit, but if you're like, I'm going to go visit and do all this stuff, it's like, it's not really that kind of city. It's much more like, I'm going to go visit, enjoy nice weather, eat at good restaurants, enjoy the outdoors, you know, drink some good beer or something like that. It's not really a city where you're like, oh, you've got to go. And you, you absolutely have to go to the tallest building downtown that's not really that tall. And there, there's a restaurant that rotates, but the restaurant isn't that good. And it's really expensive. And it's actually like the fifth tallest building in the city. DL Guiga is crazy, man. The thing about Vancouver is realizing it's culturally important for Canada, but it's still a two million person city, so it's more comparable to a St. Louis or an Austin, not a San Francisco. Those big uh, words for somebody whose airport is fucking O'Hare. Like, honestly, know your place. If you, sure, does Chicago beat Vancouver in a lot of ways? Yeah, a lot of them, without a doubt. I was gonna go down some extremely offensive paths. <laughs> They weren't going to be related to violence, okay? They were going to be related to, like, the pizza's not that good to justify how bad it is for you, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but, like, let's just start with the airport, okay? Let's just load up uh, ORD versus YVR. Anyone that's been to both that isn't from either would tell you they would rather fly into YVR, have a beautiful uh, cup of coffee, and then, you know, get on the Sky Train and get to their, get to their Airbnb that's destroying the property market. It's got a damn dinosaur in it. I do have to give them credit. DL Guiga is definitely, they're using their VIP badge. Using it up, maybe. <laughs> YVR clears, where else can I enjoy a Vancouver Canucks themed restaurant? Uh. <laughs> that restaurant is really bad, uh, but it is also like one of the only places to sit down and eat in that terminal. Look, the amenities at YVR are not that great, but the logistics of the airport are fantastic. For, for an airport that actually serves a lot of people, I mean, it doesn't serve that many people. It serves, it's, just, it's a gateway to Asia, motherfucker! How's these tastings? It's not good. Do not go there. During the night? Well, I mean, like, unless you have like, business being there, don't go there during the day either. I'm not saying you're gonna encounter like you know violence or something like that but it will probably be unpleasant for you yeah fair enough i'm not i'm not saying like they gotta you know do something about this i'm just saying like it, it always makes me laugh when we take a cruise from vancouver and then like people are staying in hotels that are like in the downtown east side and they're like this whole city is messed up and i'm like listen listen they probably should have like, it, the, the water just happens to be next to it, okay? Like, it's, I'm sure if they could reorganize the city, they would move the cruise terminal to, like, UBC or something like that. But what's done is done. You criticize London for the same thing? No, I criticize London for, um, like, being a world-class city, but apparently having, like, bad food.
Actually, I mean, you know, I've been, I know you probably feel safe because you're from London and I've been going off on Ohio a lot. I, the problem is I've actually been to London. I got a lot of bones to pick with London. Why is the, the food not that good? And I'm not talking about like, oh, we went out for, you know, like sushi and the sushi was bad. I'm talking about like why when I was in London did I eat British food and people from England were like, they, oh, you don't eat British food in London. Have you lost your mind? Like, that's crazy. And then also, why is it like $500 for, for a sandwich? Except at Greg's, the, the best restaurant I ate at in England by uh, seven orders of magnitude. You know, in most, I, I can't say all, but in most parts of the world, the biggest city also has, it's at least in competition for the best food. How is it possible that in London, like we didn't accidentally go to a good restaurant. We had, to, we had to seek them out. It was like finding a needle in a haystack. I'm not saying there's no good restaurants. I'm just saying the, the amount of, the quality of the average food that we ate was so much lower than I would have expected from a city that has 14,000 years of history. Like I would say, with God as my witness, I'm not saying this just a court controversy. I think that the average restaurant I've eaten at in Bellingham clears the average restaurant we ate at in London. Now, that was in 2015. So like maybe they've come a long way in the last few years, but I can only speak from the experience that I had, okay? I'm not even being like, oh, British food is bad. I'm saying like, it, it blew my mind that we got fish and chips in London. And I was like, the fish and chips aren't that good. People were like, oh, you're in London, that's your problem. You gotta go to fucking Nottingham Forest. You gotta go to the Wolverham, Wolves Stadium, and you get a, a, a French fry sandwich that's uh, 11 pounds 50. It's the best French fry sandwich I've ever had in my entire life. They give you a cup of gravy to drink alongside of it. Also, someone said, don't give me that. Vancouver's like two by two streets big, and the Chinese food wasn't even that good. Well, that's because if you want, I mean, I hate to do the London thing. If you want good Chinese food, you gotta go to Richmond. You should talk London, but sushi isn't Canadian food. Yeah, but the sushi in Vancouver is really good. Come to my city so you can go to a different city? No, don't come to my city. Honestly, you don't deserve it. You sound like you're more like... Uh, maybe London is something that's more your speed? Or Brighton? You can get some fantastic fish and chips out there, apparently. There's a guy on the seaside that sells them out of an old newspaper. You really game for a living? Not really. I would say uh, I would say I talk for a living. The gaming is like the little spoonful of sugar that helps the talking medicine go down. If you want to see gaming, you go to twitch.tv slash Fox. Wait two hours from the start of the stream until he finishes the just chatting segment, and then you're going to get some high quality gaming. Malf is not a good gamer. He's just slightly better than you. I'm old. I don't derive my self-esteem from being a good gamer anymore. That's, that's what I did when I was 16 and girls didn't want to talk to me. Now girls do want to talk to you? Well, yeah. I don't want to brag, but my wife talks to me every day. I'll just be like doing something and then she'll be like, hey, can you go get the ladder from the garage? I'm in, bro. <laughs> hey, I got to cook. Can you look after our daughter for a bit? She fucking loves me, dude. Unprompted. I didn't even do a pickup line or anything. I'm just I'm eating a ham sandwich off of a little plate in the kitchen. She'll be like, hey, can you run out to the Home Depot and pick up some three-eighths of an inch screws? <laughs> yeah, maybe if you maybe if you buy me dinner first. Oh man. W Riz. It's the James uh Acaster bit, right? You ever hear about negging? It's when you subtly undermine someone's self-esteem to get them to uh, like you. I was at the club and I don't want to brag, but I was getting negged all night. <laughs> it's such a good bit. Do you game in your spare time? I don't really, I don't. From, from Friday after Super Auto Pets gaming for YouTube until Monday's stream, there is there's no computer or console gaming. There's a little pogo for sure, but most of the pogo time, I'm just hanging out outside, you know? I'm like taking my kid for a walk in her stroller and then I'm going, zip, zip. 
What about in the colder months? Well, luckily for me, I don't live in Chicago, so it doesn't get that cold here. I can still go outside. You know, you think about Vancouver, you can hike and surf in the same day. You can do that in Chicago, too. You just got to catch an early flight from O'Hare Airport. If you leave the city by 7 or so, I'd recommend getting to the airport by approximately 2.30 a.m. Fly to Vancouver. If you get there early enough, you could do both in the same day. And then stop by Richmond for some Chinese. Well, here's the thing. Richmond's where the airport is. So you could just, on, on route, on route to Vancouver, you could just pick up a little Chinese food to go. I can do both in L.A. and both are better. Listen, D.L. Guiga, this one's for you. I may throw some shots at Chicago, but someone from L.A. talking about how much they love their city. I mean, this is a dangerous bit of rhetoric to get into. One of the only cities I've ever been to in my entire life where people were like, oh, downtown where all the buildings are. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, never go there. No, there's a, good food. No, 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 you don't. No, no, no. There's no good food downtown. There's a great place that's 20 minutes away. Oh, okay, uh, that 20 minutes away, that's nothing. I'll just walk. Oh, I meant tw tw uh, 20 minutes by a uh, spaceship. If you were to walk, it would take you 10 hours. You'd have to cross over 15 uh, highways that don't have sidewalks. If you take a car, and it's not rush hour, and it's not um, a convention, and it's not blah, 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 and the president isn't in town, then it'll take you 35 minutes to, take you 35 minutes to get across town, but dude, the ham sandwiches there go crazy. Would someone ever walk from Vancouver to Richmond by foot? Well, you could. You could take the uh, Arbutus Greenway. I wouldn't walk it. That would probably be like three or four hours. But you could definitely ride a bike and it would take you like 15 minutes entirely on uh, separated bike lanes. Or you could pay $3.15. You could just get on the SkyTrain and drop you right off at Richmond Brig House. Just go ahead. Now in LA, what are you gonna do? Uh, 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 Uber exists, bro. Uber exists, bro. Shut the fuck up. Chicago's also walkable. DL Guiga. Shh. <laughs> okay, I didn't know that, okay? They got the train. I've seen the Blues Brothers. I know Chicago has the train. It runs past everyone's apartment, right? Like the start of every movie about someone in Chicago is like they're living in an apartment and at 1 a.m. it's like. <laughs> It also has a great bus system. I'm not coming for Chicago for anything, honestly, except that D.L. Guiga keeps insulting Vancouver. Like, I have nothing against Chicago except, like, you know, the Chicago Blackhawks. Otherwise, I could, as far as I'm concerned, I mean, it's probably one of the best imitation New Yorks that's out there. No, NL, we have our own culture. Uh, Al Capone, Al Capone, pizza, pizza. Tommy guns, Tommy guns, Michael Jordan, Tommy guns. I'm sorry, there's a lot of resentment built up in this bit, by the way. Toronto is a great Chicago imitation. Yeah, get their ass. I'm not saying my city's perfect. I'm just saying I live there, so I'm biased. It's crazy that like, like when Vancouver real estate was way more expensive than Toronto, I was like, I get it. We don't have a winter here. Now that Toronto's real estate is like the same price as Vancouver's, I'm like, your ass is really paying like um, Shaughnessy prices to live in Richmond Hill? Like, what, what are you doing? Any tips for someone getting married next year? No, honestly, like, I'm not trying to gatekeep, but it's not, it doesn't really change your life, except from like a legality standpoint. If you're having a kid in like three months, yeah, there's a little bit of action items I would put on the to-do list. But if you're just getting married, you're just like, you know, I'll have a kid in three months. Are you, you, you can start your own stream, DL Guigo, okay? Oh, I live in Chicago. I ride the Peloton. I'm having a kid in two months. The Vancouver Seawall is an under, underutilized piece of real estate. No, it's not. I see people on it every day. Oh, yes, it is. Let me link you to this video essay by one guy. Come on, man. Like, it's just... I, I, <laughs> you what? You're Chicago NL. Hey, Anel, how do you think Zoomers are going to handle marriage? Here's what I would say, okay? I think every generation is different, and every generation is the same. What do I mean by this statement? Well, people ask the same questions about Zoomers that they asked about Millennials. You know, why aren't Millennials going to Applebee's? Why aren't Millennials, you know, buying houses? Why aren't Millennials having kids? Well, we're made of the same stardust that our parents' generation is made of. The culture changed a little bit. 
But, you know, there's different conditions and incentives, you know? I don't think it's that, like, the new generation, like, hates kids and the old generation loves kids. I think there's been a bit of a cultural shift. But also, millennials, you know, came of age in the great financial crisis and set their careers back. You know, they were proportionally poorer than their parents' generation. So they moved into the next phase of their life more slowly. And some people got kind of washed out of it. Some people moved into it so slowly that they were like, I missed my chance and then just opted not to continue. But in the whole scheme of things, you know, baked into the human brain, I think I, I'm not going to I'm just let me be careful with my verbiage here. I'm not saying everyone wants to have kids. I'm saying there is a psychological incentive baked into the human genome to procreate. And it's because coming feels good. So most people, I think if you gave you at 25, if you gave them the stability of what your parents had when they were 25, they would be substantially more likely to have children. I don't think it's because they watch too much sex in the city and they're like, oh, I want to be 40-year-old Kim Cattrall shotgunning beers, you know, in the, my golden years. Maybe there's a part of that, but I, I think that, you know, if you show me the incentives, I'll show you the results. I think there's a lot of, one of the reasons people are having kids less often these days is maybe the culture has shifted. Maybe people are more climate anxious. I think there's definitely contribution there. I also feel like complete loss of, uh, you know, jobs with pensions that you could get without going to school for like 12 years is probably a big part of it as well. The idea that 40 years ago you could graduate from high school and there's a chance you could get a job like at a factory doing relative, I'm calling it unskilled labor. I'm not saying you don't have to have skill to do it. I'm just using the industry term. And then you could just have a contented life being in the middle class, knowing that your company was going to take care of you into retirement as well. Then when you're 25 and you got the job, you're like, what, am, what else am I going to do? Of course, I'm going to have kids because my brother's having kids. My friends are having kids. I'll have kids. I'll get the reward of having kids. We'll take our kids to the barbecues. You know, we'll, we'll build a community together. These days, I think, I'm not just farming here. I'm just saying, because I know people are saying base, base, base. But these days, I mean, the world is not as kid friendly. This is going to sound super biased. The world is not that parent friendly. I know you're going to say like, oh, you get to get on the airplane early. Sure. And maybe people will give up their seat on the bus for you. But like most, most families these days to afford the cost of living, both parents have to work. That's a big cultural shift from like 100 years ago for sure. Both parents have to work. That means the kid needs to be in childcare. Childcare is expensive as fuck. It oftentimes takes up like one of the person's whole income. So you're like, what the hell? They're... Both parents are working, but one of the parents is working just to pay for the ability to be able to work. Like the cost of, of living is, is crazy for sure. So if, and I mean, like housing prices in North America have like 4 x in 20 years or something like that. Mortgage rates are at seven and a half percent in the U.S. and like close to that in Canada. You're like, no wonder your your like 32 year old son isn't giving you grandkids. It's because like he could barely make his rent payment, man. If he could have like a like a grand left over after he made his rent payment, then he might be like, this time to move into the next phase of my life. And the animals are leaving, and the and then meanwhile, that fucking whatever the park was called. Malik, are you here? In Fairview, in Fairview, there's an eight-person daycare. They wanted to expand it to a 16-person daycare. Everybody that lived there over the age of 75 came out. Whoa, how is our street going to accommodate eight more cars? It's already so busy here. I can barely walk out my street without seeing another person four blocks away. You can't, you can't handle eight more cars for two minutes a day during pickup and drop off. I can't keep my windows open in the summer. It's so annoying. Oh, hearing three-year-old children laughing is ruining my life, you old bag. What are you talking about? Um, hello. Um, hello. Uh, hey there. Um, um, what, the scallop? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like you were so, on something on your stream and I have no idea what the hell you're talking about. Yeah. Glizzy. Thanks for the glizzy. Yum. Oh. Oh. Entering oh. glizzy overdrive. Oh, Increasing grip strength by 7%. <laughs>
<laughs> oh my god, do they add they got like J O N P C S now? No, it's not J. Did you not see Glizzy Overdrive? Or you haven't seen Glizzy Overdrive? No. Oh, oh man. Lore Masters, can I get a Glizzy Overdrive link, please? I agree. Can I tell you, I got so strapped for space on the SSD, I thought about deleting London and just reinstalling Ooh. it a week later. But then I was like, wow. when, when the game works, don't Let's fuck see. with it. Cause. <laughs> yep. That's a good point. Good point. Just well, how big is your SSD? I don't want to talk about it. Come on, man. So I, I had been like micromanaging, like I'd been deleting games that I hadn't played that were bigger than five gigabytes. Um, uh -huh. I would delete them after like a week, right? Yeah. Which is crazy. But then I scrolled way, way back on Steam through like uh, probably 200 uninstalled games and I found a fresh vein of installed games I haven't played in years. And I was like, let's go! <laughs> All right, all right. It's not just in your Steam library, it's somewhere else? No, 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 they're, they're in my Steam library, but my Steam library oh, is see. sorted by like last played. So I would like, uh, I, I hit a, I thought that it was all uninstalled, but then I kept scrolling, 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 scrolling. And then it was like, oh, Counter-Strike Global Offensive, you, offensive, 81 gigabytes, get out of here. Yeah, you know, you could have Steam just show you installed games only, right? What the, yeah. really? Yeah. yeah. Filter Dude, by installed locally. Oh! <laughs> it's oh. crazy to me that you haven't been doing this. Well, <laughs> hey, I still have prominence poker installed. I what the can fuck? definitely uninstall Super Mega Baseball 2. <laughs> That's so many Super <laughs> Mega Baseballs ago. Yeah. <laughs> But some of these games Man. are so oh, short really? or so small, they don't even warrant being, on, oh my God, Dead by Daylight's installed, uninstalled, that <laughs> fucker right there. Oh, <laughs> That's so good. Oh my God. Also, oh my can I say God. Glizzy Overdrive guy is fucking brilliant. Dude, it's so a good, genius, right? Dude. That's a genius move. Glizzy Overdrive's crazy. Probably uninstalled Vampire the Masquerade Blood Hunt. Yeah, yeah. Oh, dude, but they might give another bounty. <laughs> Probably uninstalled Project Zomboid. That's a good one. Probably yeah, uninstall right. uh, the Adams Family Mansion Mayhem. No. <laughs> <laughs> How long did Ryan last in Project Zomboid? Hot Wheels Unleashed. Uh, long enough for my viewers to fall asleep, so about five minutes. <laughs> Probably uninstall Nickelodeon All Stars wow. Brawl. Probably uninstall wow. Oh, wow. Story I remember that. Storybook Brawl. Keep Fall Guys up there. Having Adam's family installed is so fucking funny. <laughs> That's absurd. <laughs> oh, this is oh, dude, not for broadcast. That's gonna free up like seventy gigs, bro. Yeah, this is crazy. How many games are in your Steam library? Like not installed, but just overall. How can you know this? If you so, just at the top, it says it'll like if you sort alphabetically anyway, your games and software, mm, the top will be okay. like uncategorized and then a number. 1689. Oh, my Ooh. God. Sheesh. Sheesh. You, you have like literally double mine. I have 831. Yeah, but you guys I played have, like uh, a, a 5000 hours of PUBG each. I'm out here it's scraping true. the bottom it's of the true. barrel three times a week. You guys have changed my life, by the way. <laughs> like, this is this is huge. Yeah, yeah, it's gigantic. 127 gigabytes free? It should be more than that. <laughs> That's not enough. Got to make room for Starfield. Mm, good one. <laughs> sort by size on disk. Oh man, this is juicy. Yeah. <laughs> oh, can I tell yeah. you the, the biggest game that I would feel comfortable deleting is only eight gigs. So I'm getting pretty close to the max here. Ooh. <clears throat> How yeah, big I gotta delete you? some stuff. I have like v I have a couple of VR games installed and they're just tremendous. But Did I also you have ever a ton of storage. Expose your SSD size? Uh it's nine hundred and thirty gigabytes. Oh, it's, oh, it's a terabyte. That's that's reasonable. Okay. Could yeah, be, it is reasonable. It could be bigger. Said, Don't get me wrong. It could be. I think I have two two terabyte like NVMe drives. And one of them's all games, and then one of them's like... Yeah, I know. You don't need to expose yourself. I know what that other one is. <laughs> <laughs> He's downloading hey, all of his... All these pictures. Just pictures. Images that his fans send him. 
I am downloading no what images. The fuck? <laughs> My fans are sending me no it's images. Just, it's just artwork. He likes he likes the art. I think Corey was trying to insinuate that it was cartoon pornography, but it sounded like <laughs> it's a different situation altogether. Yeah. Thank you for saving me. You know what's crazy? Uh -huh. so <laughs> what? The shelves made my lighting so much better. Like you remember when I was in Narcos? Mm -hmm. Here, I'll, I'll, I'll hit you with like a Windows snipper tool or something. So you got shelves behind you? Are you gonna put your, your gaming related merchandise back there? I don't have any. I don't know what I'm gonna put up there, honestly, but the shelves look nice. Your little Among Us bot and... Oh, it does look much nicer. It, it's the, the shadows, man. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the Crash Bandicoot hand. I honestly have no idea what I'm going to put up here, but I guarantee it's going to annoy Chad no matter what. <laughs> <laughs> you I should, mean. like, just mess with them and put, like, a bong up there. Dude! I can put that on the shelf that's above so they can't see. I don't want them to know that I partake. <laughs> I don't yeah. want the police to break down my door. And I'm like, it's for tobacco use only! It's like... <laughs> the idea of someone smoking tobacco out of a bong is so I know. fucking funny. <laughs> I, I, love, <laughs> so I, I love that all the head shops operate under that loophole for like I know. decades. <laughs> like, oh, it's for tobacco. Uh-huh. <laughs> Absolutely. The best was on like, because like they, they maintained that even when like concentrates became a thing. <laughs> yeah. So they'd be selling dab rigs being like tobacco only. <laughs> yeah. it's... I, I imagine it's dabbing like cigarettes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. Dude, hang on. It's, it's my yeah. it's my smoke break. <laughs> uh. <laughs> we laughed really hard, but apparently you can bong a vape. Yeah. Well I was laughing because I at the time I was actively bonging vape. What are oh, really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Did you see the tweet from that lady that said me before I go out anywhere? And then she like puts weed inside of, uh, I don't even know how to describe it, like a nuclear bomb and then <laughs> takes it straight what? to the face in her car. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah. <laughs> takes like eight hits yeah, yeah. off of the most Oppenheimer ass contraption I've ever seen in my entire life and then probably drives somewhere. Like, uh... I do like the one tweet that's like, uh, bitch, we're just going to Walmart. Why the fuck do you need to smoke weed? Chip, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> you want to help me? Uh, me before I go anywhere. Oh, thanks to the, the librarian, I saw that, that girl hit the nuclear yeah, bomb man. in her car. She is a problem. You should, you should not be smoking that much weed. You should, in my personal opinion, I don't want to get canceled for this. I don't think you should be smoking any weed in your car. I'm just going out on a limit saying that, but you definitely shouldn't be hitting the gravity bomb before you drive to the pharmacy. <laughs> Do you imagine if she had an actual gravity bong in her car? That'd be real fucked up. I don't know what a gravity bong is. Is that not a gravity bong? A, a gravity bong is like... I don't do they do they make involves, real ones? I've I mean, only ever seen like jacked up like ones made out of trash cans. No, nah, I think everyone's <laughs> doing them with like buckets and Gatorade bongs. Yeah, yeah. Aren't all <laughs> bongs gravity bongs? Because the water no. pushes the gravity pushes the smoke out of the nope, No, because okay. that's not how all any bongs work except gravity bongs. Yeah, you suck you suck out of a bong. Yeah, you're, you're yeah sucking. but like gravity bong, you're pushing on it and it like Forces its way into your lungs. I thought it uses like a car battery or something. What the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> huh. Like an air That's compressor. That's another level, right. man. That's another level, dude. Listen, I didn't smoke that much weed. When I did it, it was usually a green plastic two liter bottle that someone poked a hole in with a ballpoint pen and then put a joint into the hole and then you sucked on the top of the two liter until the whole thing filled up with smoke. And then you pulled the joint out and cleared the, all the microplastics like straight into your yeah, lungs. That's, that's, <laughs> that's pretty funny. That is pretty funny. There, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know if there's like a name for that. That's weird that that's like the only way you did it. I know, man. Yeah, that's very funny. <laughs> It's like giving, it's like shotgunning. It's like a self shotgun. Yeah, yeah it's weird. No, it's crazy for sure. It definitely should not have done that. You ever Sounds like a shotgun, gravity? Uh, shotgun a joint or blunt at you? No. What, what do you do with that? that? That's where they stick the end in their mouth 
<laughs> and then they cup their hands over the part you would suck on, and then you stick your hands up to their hands, and then you suck in while they blow all the smoke in your mouth. That seems it's dangerous. disgusting. That's, no, it's disgusting never, and dangerous. It's like something they do in Cirque du Soleil. <laughs> You're like smoking their their lungs. Yeah, but aren't you also like burning the shit out of your mouth? Uh, there their are some mouth. people who are good at that, I guess. Dude, pot smokers are crazy, man. Yeah, yeah. They get so bored of just like smoking out of a bowl. They come up with like wacky ways of getting extremely high. It's true. There's only like a few different ways you can drink a beer. You could drink it. You could chug it. You could do the bottle tornado. You could shotgun it. You could do a, a beer bong from like the second floor of a frat house or you could put it up your butt. That's it. <laughs> There's only like yeah. six ways, something like that. With weed, I mean, the world's your oyster. I guess we're going to yep. play uh, some London. I, I guess so. <laughs> I guess so. <laughs> Fuck, we could just do Texas Chainsaw Massacre as three killers. I just finished, <laughs> I just finished playing Texas Chainsaw Massacre, though. So. Uh, <laughs> and, like, I, I don't particularly want to. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's saying do it, though. I'm being peer pressured. Uh, they've this should have suggested. I'm sorry, Justin. They've, I'm sorry. Already, they've already covered the... Uh, they've already uncovered the hole in the... Canada dry bottle, all you gotta do is insert the joint into it. <laughs> <laughs> That's gotta be like. Um, yeah, it's bad for you. It's a, yeah, I'm just thinking like, it, it, I guess it's like a, it's like a weird bong almost. I was never a big bong guy. Like, <laughs> do you were more of a tiny bong guy? Yeah. No, I, yeah. <laughs> I never understood. Like, I had, I had some friends who had like a six foot bong. Yeah, I, mean, I don't. I don't understand. That's just. Yet, someone had to light it for you. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. Like, this is just. Why? The water's why? just farther away. Yeah. One time I um, because this may go on YouTube. I have to use innuendos. One time yeah. I I partook in a substance that is now legal where I live, and this was like, fourteen years ago. Um, I lost the ability oh to see colors. What or alternatively, maybe I was seeing them, but my brain didn't know that I was seeing them. And I was like, hey, guys, all of my vision is in black and white. And they were like, yeah, don't worry about it. Uh, just go, <laughs> just sit down for a while and it'll go away. And then I sat down on my dryer and like two hours passed and then I could see color. Again. <laughs> but I, it wasn't like my color vision came back. It was like at some point I just had a realization that was like, I am seeing in color now. Like yeah. as if like a, a dream upon waking, it just changed. I remember one time my, I was at like a, like a band practice in like a friend's basement and uh, he wanted to partake and he had to walk out of the house and he went to like this like sewer entrance <laughs> like outside of the the uh the Penny, development pennywise ass yeah, and i went out later like like maybe two minutes three minutes after him <laughs> and i walked up and he scared the shit out of him because it wasn't you know legal and he he jumped so high he threw the uh the material on the ground and he yeah. was really fucking mad because he couldn't, he couldn't find it. So I think true. he ended up. Dude tried to smoke some... with Donatello. <laughs> I think he took some moss off the ground after. And Dude, it's took care of himself. As a, a relatively responsible adult, it's crazy that like a friend used to just show up at your house with a Ziploc bag full of something that he bought from a stranger. Uh huh. And you would be like, Yeah, let's smoke that. Yeah, <laughs> like let's. Just... Dude, there we're... was a. How did I? How did we talk? Like I've your friend, like really... he bought it from like his older brother's friend, yep. who who I've got, got really it from grim. God knows where. And then you'd be like, yeah, let's 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 inhale that shit. Let's just put that shit in our lungs. I mean, you ever, you guys ever have a situation where you partook in something that you didn't agree to? Not that uh, I know of, yes. but I did lose my color vision that one time. So who knows? Yeah, yeah who knows? Uh, one time. I had a negative uh experience with something that i'll refer to as wet <laughs> it's it's the name of the stuff 
It's 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 a, uh, a a a substance you partake in that is soaked in something else that you don't want to partake in. I see. I see, I see. <laughs> is that the one that makes you bulletproof? Uh, it made me want to die. <laughs> and then I asked the guy what it was, and he's like, "Oh, it's this." I was like, "What the fuck? I didn't know that." He told you after you smoked it. Yeah. That's fucking crazy, dude. I mean, you don't ask those questions, man. When you're uh, when in those you're, situations, you just smoke it. These days, I'm like, oh, <laughs> free range eggs? No, I think I, I'm, yeah. I'm at a free run part of my life, actually. I think it was back in the day, your friend's friend would show up with a Ziploc bag full of something, and you'd just be like, roll it up. What are we waiting for? I want the yeah. free base eggs, man. What are we waiting for? Adult swims on. It's such a different part of my life. I remember one summer, uh, I lived with my friend who was... A drug addict, but it's okay because it was just weed uh, <laughs> at the time. And uh, that was the, the only summer I really partook at on a semi-regular basis. There was definitely like one day we uh, partook and then we sat down to watch like Rocco's Modern Life on some bootleg internet TV channel. Mm -hmm. And we were laughing our ass off for like 20 minutes. And then I said, wait a minute. Like the video, there's no video. Like somehow we were on the audio only feed and the video screen was like, the show will start soon. And we were just <laughs> laughing our ass off at the, the, the Rocco's Modern Life podcast. Oh, I love that. Oh, man. I told you my mall rats one, right? I don't remember sure it, but you may well, have. The TLDR with that is that I was with a couple friends and we partook while we were younger. And my friend put on the Mallrats director's cut, which uh -huh. the first 20 minutes of the movie are completely different. And none of us knew this. So we just thought the wrong movie was on. But then we realized it was the same actors and like character names just doing very different things. That's very I, funny. I thought I'd lost my mind. Isn't it crazy Dry that water. some matter is liquid at room temperature? Like, when I think of matter, I don't know about you, I always think about, like, an ingot of iron. I'm like, that's, a, well, that's matter. But what's then, matter? Like, sometimes, listen, sometimes, <laughs> like, water is just like, check it out. It's 20 degrees Celsius. You know where I am? Boom. Fitting the shape of the container I've been placed in. What's up with that, man? Like, like isn't that weird? <laughs> <laughs> I gotta be honest, yes. right, right. I don't like thinking about these these deep t subjects. They start to fuck me up, and then I start to think about the universe and the vastness of it. Yeah, 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 exactly. How insignificant <laughs> I am, and how this shit doesn't matter, and like a gas, I kind of get. Like it would be super weird if you were like, oh, I come home and like, oh, where's my where's my oxygen? Oh, it's on the table right where I left it. I would be like, bro, that's not. You're not that guy. You're a gas. You expand uh, to fill the container in which you're in, okay? But like, yeah. uh, but a liquid is like, that's solid I get, gas I get, liquid. Liquid's crazy, man. I saw a video yesterday. I can't remember his name. It's some YouTube scientist guy. He turned plastic gloves into hot sauce and then huh. via, via chemistry. That's crazy. That dude's an alchemist. You know what he should have done? Sauce. He should have cut a little bit out of one of the fingertips and then put a joint in it and then smoked <laughs> out, of the, out of the glove. Yeah, yeah, agreed. agreed. The end of the episode. Nile Red, is that it? Yeah, no, that was a... It, he does wacky stuff, man. Chemistry is crazy. Yeah, chemistry is pretty wild. It's kind of crazy that everything's made of like the same... Yeah, I mean, like the periodic tables, I don't know, like 150, 200 things, whatever. But like everything on Earth is made of like, like eight of them. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like not all the elements are created equal, okay? A lot of carbon, a lot of nitrogen, a lot of silicon. Ain't that much Eisensteinium out there. No, that's true. That's scary. Oh, that's true. Did you call it Eisensteinium? It is Eisensteinium, isn't it? Isn't it Einsteinium? I thought it was Eisensteinium. It's Einsteinium. Super Dave Osborne? What, none of you, none of you MFers ever encountered it in the wild anyway. This shit has a half-life of like one picosecond. I blew it. I fucking blew it, dude. Okay. What tiny mistake? That's the difference between gold and silver.
That hurts. New Olympic record on my machine. <laughs> the guy sounded so disappointed when he said an Italy finished with bronze. Can I, uh, you know, uh, baby shoes, for sale baby shoes never worn? Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. I'm going to write a sadder six word short story, okay, right here. Mm -hmm. Bronze, medal, pasta, medal for Italy. <laughs> Wow. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> I'm tearing up over here just thinking about it. Huh? Wouldn't it be a sad story if an Italian Bronze guy medal. came third in a pesto making competition? That would be sad. Is that what that meant? Yeah. I only got six words, brother. <laughs> I love when he says really good stroking. Same. You don't hear that. I could too much. use a guy to do that to me just every now and then. Your clone? Huh? Your clone? Yeah, yes! He could sit in the corner and do really good stroking. Just cheering me on. Applauding when you know what happens. When you know what happens. <laughs> it's the greatest... <laughs> it's the greatest swim of my entire life. I can't Calling second, you know what is so funny. Oh, you, oh, you partake? <laughs> <laughs> Two guys having a conversation. One of them thinks partake means smoking weed. One of them thinks partake means jerking yourself off. <laughs> I like that. I like that. Me and my friends were about to partake in a parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> you want to go partake? He's like, yeah. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 <laughs> you want to go partake in the bathroom, dude? <laughs> Damn, this dude's got <laughs> abs, man. You guys, Damn. you guys got abs like this? Yeah, they got, yeah, they got, got some, some pretty too. sick abs. Yeah, I got abs like this. <laughs> they're they're under. My mine are hidden. Quick question: Do you partake? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, three times a week. I'm partaking every day. Damn, you must be tired. I think you, Corey. I think you're doing it wrong. <laughs> I, don't, <laughs> I don't think that should tucker you out. Have you had a <laughs> you had a red blood cell count recently? Dude, what are you talking about, man? Weed really makes me tired. Oh, I forgot. Oh, I was the guy. <laughs> <laughs> Can you explain to me um, why every time you go into a public bathroom, uh -huh. all four of the toilet stalls are fucked beyond belief? Like, are people just like, my life's fucked, so I'm going to ruin your life too, I guess? I I don't know, man. Like, otherwise normal people going to take a shit in a public toilet and not flushing seems insane to me. Yeah. <laughs> I think a lot of people assume it's automatic. Okay. I could see Gen Z. At least I feel like almost every toilet I've seen is automatic. I don't go in a lot of public restrooms. I hate them, so I avoid them. Dude, I but hate the automatic toilets through. when you when you take a poop and you stand up and it flushes like immediately. I'm get, trying to gets think. Gets your about, khakis wet. Gets your chinos wet. Yeah, I want to be in control. I think the only public poop and I've done in like my adult life has been airports. I pooped on my on the last airplane I was on and like mid flight, and that's yeah, yeah. it's only the second time I've ever done it in my entire life. Yeah, it's like you're like thirty thousand feet in the air taking a shit, and the seatbelt <laughs> sign was on too. So I finally figured That's out what the bar dude. is. I figured out what the bar was for, but I was also like, I mean, I'll say I say this to get a laugh, but like, hmm. essentially, like I was so happy that planes are loud because I swear to you, by the time <laughs> I, by the time I got to the toilet, I sat down. And I had been holding gas for so long, I farted for like at least 35 seconds straight in, oh, just, hell in, yeah. in one fart. I, uh, oh, no. I find this like very, I, I feel like this is both cool and funny, but uh, it was a huge moment for me. Uh, no. I had to poop on a flight, like, I don't know, it was like maybe two years ago now. Okay. Yeah. But it was after I'd been losing weight for a bit, and I genuinely didn't think I could poop on the plane because like i mean it's a small little spot it's a tiny yeah. room and i in the past i wasn't able to but when i had to go poop on the plane and could i was like wow let's go picture you like, like high, was, high fiving the whole aisle when you go back to your seat <laughs> yeah it was such a proud moment for me and i and like i'm like this is so funny to be proud of like shit <laughs> on the airplane <laughs> that's just so funny 
But honestly, that took a lot of anxiety out of the travel. Dude, that was always I a big, believe it. That was a fear in my head. I was like, what if I have to like go shit and I can't? What do I just? Do I just admit defeat? <laughs> what do you do? You, you pull a you pull a former president and just shit your pants. Which president was that? Yeah, who shit in their uh, pants? Donald Trump is apparently always pooping his pants. Really? That yeah. rocks. I mean, I'd believe it, I guess. They I said they, they, they used to call The Apprentice like the shit show or something like that because he would wear a lav mic and whoever was operating the sound would just hear like... And they're like, oh, no. Oh, Jesus. And they'd, they'd like have to go clean him up. I had a friend who worked on that show. I never heard that. Can you get that <laughs> vetted? Because it just it just seems like it. Yeah. I I have no idea. I'm, I want I'm to what believe I it, but I just don't. I do too. I do too. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not saying it can't be true. <laughs> I'm just saying like, no, I'm no, no. Yes, I'm yes, skeptical yes, no, no, of it yes, because yes, yes. it appeals to me so much. Yeah. Oh no, I agree. I agree. Yeah, yeah. But I'm still going to repeat be it because it's funny. Uh, did you guys see the story about the woman at the Chicago White Sox game who accidentally shot herself? Uh, no. What? She smuggled the gun past security by putting it in between the folds of her belly. And then... And then wait, 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 wait. it went off? Yeah, there was an accidental discharge and she shot herself. And lived. Wow. So wait, Which so we, did... we, we all love to see, by the way. Why did she smuggle a gun in... That's well, I guess because the only thing that could here. stop a bad girl with a gun is a good girl with a gun. That's true. Like, she can't get rid of her gun because what if somebody smuggles a gun in here? Yeah, yeah. What if a bad person <laughs> did the same exact thing? Yeah. Fuck, well, I mean, I look at how lax the security is, man. I didn't think of it that way. Mm -hmm. Man, speaking mm -hmm. of like, shitty people, did you see that story, Ryan, of the like uh, the train station, the Sky Train station that put the su the sushi vending machine out, and it lasted less than a week before I, someone uh, smashed the glass and took off. I the did not, <laughs> but that you you can't have shit in North America, man. That's true. In Japan, a sushi they vending machine is also very funny. They would have turned it into a shrine in Japan. It would have been the most respected public property in the entire country. <laughs> if you put that shit in Philadelphia, they tip it over in three seconds. Oh yeah, dude, they, they murdered that robot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, dude, I think about that robot often. That shit's so funny. <laughs> like roamed across Canada, worry free. Yeah, gets to America and just gets murdered in Philly immediately. <laughs> <laughs> But, like, also... Oh, hi, city of brotherly love. Fuck, fuck that <laughs> robot. Like, Die. Like, what, yeah, fuck that robot. Robot never did anything for you, and then you're like, you expect me not to beat it to death with a hammer? <laughs> Assault it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's that, that tweet that's like, I'll tell you one thing. If me and my friends found E.T., we would have beat him to death with hammers. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> You guys think you would have beat, uh, beaten E.T. to death with hammers? Well, I don't think no. so. No. I, I think I would have ran I, the other way. Yeah, I would have ran away screaming. I grew up in kind of like a redneck area. I think probably what would have happened is my friends would have beat E.T. to death with hammers or like tied him up and run him over with an ATV. And I would have been <laughs> like, <laughs> I would have been screaming like, no, you're going to kill him. <laughs> Discord ate all of that. <laughs> That's probably for the best, man. <laughs> well, there's no why this isn't Not Malf. This is in the pre-Malf era. With an ATV is just so specific. They loved riding those things, man. Like they did that yeah. to something else before. No, I, 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 I could just imagine. Person. You never gone I've over to your friend's uh, house in the winter time, and he's been like, "Hey, I'm nine years old. Let me drive the snowmobile with the GT racer tied behind it, and you can hold <laughs> on to the GT racer. I won't hit nah, any trees. Dope, I promise." This sounds sick. No, that sounds yeah, it sounds sick as hell. It is a little scary. I had a friend who would see snow banks and drive his car into it at full speed. Now that's oh crazy. hell yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I used to I used to pull the the parking brake when turning into my uh, my house in the in America when it was snowy. You just do like a a sick drift. I used to scare the shit out of my girlfriend at the time. <laughs> and then you were like, "Don't worry, I know what I'm doing." And she was like, "No, I was imagining what you'd look like if you didn't have any hair." Ah, uh, too too late. <laughs> I don't know why that. It was, it was already too late. Ah, shit. I chose the wrong dive. I'm cooked. 
actually. I've been balder for more of my life than I was haired. I hear you. I think my anniversary for that is like next year or the year after. It's crazy to be bald for longer than you're... I feel like that happens to it's a lot fucked. of men, but it doesn't happen until they're like 91. Yeah, like they a don't 90, go bald till they're like 40. Picture a 91-year-old man being like, you know, I've been bald longer than I had hair. How many years as an adult did you have hair, Corey? Like three, four? That's crazy. I, I had Damn. like one and a half, but I mean, I'm sure you're in the same boat. It's not like it started from 100. No, <laughs> no, no. It was, it was like, I remember some kid in high school was like, oh, Corey's going bald, Corey's going bald. I'm like, what are you talking about? And my hair's I naturally get, thin. No, I, no, like my hair was fine. I didn't know what he was talking about. Then my I went hair's to my naturally hair, fine. Hair, <laughs> my hairdresser. And uh, I was like, am I going bald? And he's like, no. And then like two years later, I was fucking bald. <laughs> I was like, I'm lying out of his ass. <clears throat> Damn. You shouldn't be balding at prom. That's just like horrible. Yeah. So, so the saddest six word short story. Oh no, he's balding at prom. <laughs> oh, that's brutal. A bald guy asked me to prom. Yeah. <laughs> did you go to prom? I did not. <laughs> bald ass. Ryan, you go to prom? I went to prom. I went to prom. I had a bad experience at a previous school function dance. Mm -hmm. School dance function, and I vowed to never go again. They played uh, jump around. And no, the Corey girl I was like in love what, with the dance moves. <laughs> <laughs> the girl I was in love with went to the went to the prom with me, and then she left with another guy. <laughs> oh, that's no. rough. Yeah, that's brutal. <laughs> yeah, my friend. <clears throat> Damn, that's that's. Yeah, I'm gonna, was, keep, it, I'm gonna keep it a buck fifty with you. Everyone you meet at prom is a snake. Middle school is uh <laughs> middle school. Yeah, she left with another guy at middle school. She yeah, they went to like a party. A middle school part? What, is, what are they doing in Philly, man? Yeah, was, oh, party. There's an after party for the middle school prom? There was, yeah. So the after party mm. was your parents pick you up and you go home and brush your teeth. Nah, they they went to like a, like a hot tub party or some shit. What? Damn. Yeah. <laughs> this is crazy, man. <laughs> yeah, it was like, it was like ninth grade. Okay, Damn. that's our it's high like, school up here. Yeah, it was like so you. I, that I is see. also high school where I was. Yeah, I feel like bald people, and this I, it's yes. I I know it from me and from you and from another person that is bald. I mm. I feel that bald people run a little bit hotter than the average individual. I saw a snippet from uh, some like a video profile on like a Japanese male host. And like they're talking about his life and stuff, blah blah blah. And he's like, "Yeah, this is my apartment. I keep it thirty degrees year round in my are you, apartment." Are you talking I'm about? Like, are, you, are you talking about Roland? I don't know. Does he have? Is that his name? Incredibly blonde, straight hair. He did. Yes. <laughs> yes. He did. <laughs> Who is this? In Japan, there's something called a host club, which is hmm. kind of like a strip club for women to go to, except the men don't strip. They just sell you expensive drinks. Yeah, they just make you drink and pretend that they like you. Then they'll like listen to your stories and they don't even yeah. say uh. like, damn, that's crazy or anything. So and then the male hosts take than their money. <laughs> <laughs> the male hosts take their money and then spend it at female host clubs. Yes. And then the female hosts go to the male host. No, then this... the female hosts invest in the Japanese <laughs> stock market. But... <laughs> But yeah, dude, he keeps his apartment 30 Celsius all year round. I was like, this man is insane. What is that Fahrenheit? Uh, like, like 85 yeah, or something? It's, yeah, it's really hot. Jesus. Then, I don't know if it's the same video, but I was looking at this fucker, and I was like, he was like, my life's so busy. I, I don't know what to do. And he was doing insane stuff. Like, every day he used a new toothbrush. Because he's like, when you think about it, you wouldn't lick yeah. somebody's shoe after they walk on it. So why would you put a toothbrush in your mouth twice? And I'm like, are you stupid? これ
Yeah. Yeah. And then he was he was like, my day is so busy, I don't always get time to go to the gym. And then he took like a two hour walk, went to the gym, uh, shoulder pressed 20 pounds, and his trainer went like, he's the strongest man I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> Go, look, sit, itch. Yeah, but really, the last one I saw was so big. It's 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 so big. And then he was like, whoa, that's crazy. Now it's time to go to work. And then at work, he was just sitting in an office drinking sparkling water all night. I was like, this guy does even less than I do. I don't, I don't buy it. I'm not buying into the Roland mythos. He also has a, like a, a book of quotes or something like that. And he was like talking about some of his quotes. He's like, it's like I wrote in my book. Why would you drink water when you could drink champagne? And I'm like, what is this? What does it even mean? Yeah. Well, they're like the worst people. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. Like, like. They're the kind of guys that are like, you know, they they stand outside of the clubs and they're like, hey, come on inside, come on inside, come on. And then you get inside and they're like, all right, it'll be 5,000 yen to sit down. Yeah. I've heard about that. I'll stand. <laughs> that, that's 7,000 yen. No, no. <laughs> I got real mad, like one of the first bars I went to in Japan. It was like some old woman behind like the, the bar. And I'm just in there because I'm lonely drinking and then like at the end of the night like they they ring up my tab and there's like an extra two thousand yen on it for a sit down fee and i'm like what the fuck? <laughs> I was like, what the fuck is this bullshit uh can i go pure uh, yeah no no I'm we got it where we really got a rush on here <laughs> in london it's like nitrogen man i'm like i don't expect it to just be like a block on my table right like i wouldn't leave my nitrogen on the table because it wouldn't be there when i got back but like you're liquids, this, huh? liquids are like, check it out. Here I am in this glass. And you're like, still? <laughs> okay. <laughs> you're so good at small talk. I'm actually not. Every time I pick up my daughter from daycare, I'm like, the daycare lady says, how are you? And I say, I'm good, how are you? And then I'm like, fucking idiot. You said you were good yesterday, you moron. You're supposed to say, not bad, <laughs> dumbass. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like how was your day and like a fucking idiot i go good i put like a tilde on the end of it it was like 17 o's good how was yours sound like a fucking motorcycle shifting gears good how was yours not bad i'm fine thank you and you at the drive through when they say enjoy your meal and you go you too and then you drive away you go fuck 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 <laughs> I'm so fucking stupid. <laughs> no. Pew. You're shooting a hole in the top of your car because you're mad. <laughs> I feel like, Corey, we have to have a conversation about, I don't know if this is worldwide. The Vancouver drive through operators need to take a, uh, a one hour e-seminar. And all On like how to ask for like anything else? Yes. So yeah. I, I'm pulling up in a Honda Odyssey with four rows of pilot seating, okay? I got 17 kids in the back. I say, hey, I'll take a chicken, 10 piece chicken McNugget combo with a Coke Zero, please. And they say- uh, That'll be $7. Yes, yeah, so that'll be $7 next window. And I'm like, lady, yeah. that's just for the <laughs> yeah. dog. That's just for the dog. Yeah. We yeah. haven't even gotten started yet. You run, can, I get a, can I get a cheeseburger, no cheese? Can I get a small milkshake shake in a medium cup? Can I just get a Happy Meal but no yogurt, two toys? Like you're about to go on a journey with me. You thought you were get, you thought I was coming to McDonald's for one meal? Yeah. It's we're no, about every, to every start time. a new era. Every time. I 100% I agree with you. I go through the drive-through and they're I'm like, "Guy, are you collecting <laughs> points today?" I give them the code and they're like, "Okay." 
what what will you have? I'm like, okay, can I get like a, you know, a, I'll take a, a McChicken meal. Like, okay, that'll be $13. Come to the next window. I'm like, I'm not done, please. Can you, you know you know what they want you to do? Yeah. They want you to just order ask. one thing at a time. They want you to just get back in the line. else, for fuck's sake. To just get back in the line and be like, I will yeah. take a medium Coke Zero. We're all out of Coke Zero. <laughs> I don't buy it. Is Diet yeah. Coke okay? No, it's not. Give me a Sprite. <laughs> yeah, there's no there, there's no there's no ice cream today. That I do buy. Good the worst is when you say, "Do you loop? have?" <laughs> we're making. What if, what if you do? Do you have Coke Zero? And they go, "Yes." All right, I'll have a Coke Zero, and you get it, and it's fucking Diet Coke, and you know it's Diet Coke. You can just yeah. taste it. Ugh. Yeah, you'd be like, "Oh, oh this yeah. this sorbitol tastes like aspartame." Yeah, and you want to throw it right back at the person. <clears throat> Trying to play with a cat in my arms. He's decided. Dude, it's, dude, it's I didn't say we're, we're we're getting an, another cat. Tomorrow. What? Yeah, we're picking up yeah. a buddy for Jiro. Well, we're picking up a girlfriend Aww. for Jiro. Yeah. <laughs> we're, like, we're like arrange marrying him. I uh, every time I go to get them food at the pet place. What the hell? I look at the cats that are up for adoption, and I'm always like, I can do a third. That's how it Dating starts. is not happening in my late thirties. <laughs> 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 I can just keep adding more cats. Oh, oh no, oh no. <laughs> Dude, it's uh ooh, any of y'all out there, if you're in a relationship <laughs> and you're in hang your, on, hang your late on. 30s, yeah, you stay in. At oh, all costs. Man. It's bad out there, man. I feel you're like at that age you need to find someone who is divorced. I was just, uh, yeah, yeah. Because if you find someone who's never been okay, I know this describes you. So I apologize. Okay. <laughs> but if you, okay. if you find like a 38 year old who has never been married or in a relationship similar to marriage, I mean, that's like when you get wheeled. This is so, this is so rude. I'm sorry. It's, <laughs> no, no, continue. You continue. know when you're at the Magic the Gathering uh, draft and they the person to your right hands you like. Um, a land, a common, and the token card, and you're like, what uh -huh. am I supposed to do with this? Yeah, yeah. This chaff? Well, you, I don't want to finish the sentence. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. <laughs> Justin's loading the gun. <laughs> I also talk about this with, with Kate all the time. I, because, uh, you know, we got married pretty young. She was like 20, 21 or 22. I was 25. Oh my God. It's pretty young, right? I, w because we got married young and we lived together pretty young as well, we never got super set in our own ways. You know, we oh, always yeah. had to live yeah. in a cohabitation experience where she does some things the way I wouldn't do and I do a lot of things the way that she wouldn't do. Mm -hmm. I feel like it must be tough to have oh, like terrible. lived on your own for like... 10 years and then like introduce another adult into that situation when you're, yeah, yeah yeah so aren't you like why the fuck do you load the dishwasher like that you psycho like why yeah. do you i think at that point though you also have to like be a mature adult and realize that that stuff doesn't matter and yeah, not yeah. freak out about that stuff pick your battles well i think it like the older you get the harder it is right because like you, you you when i was when i moved in with kate i had my own way of doing things but it was pretty plastic because i just you know i'd only lived as an adult for like a few years <laughs> but like if you've if you've set these habits for like 20 years I, I, I don't know. I I'm not like saying it's over for you, by the way. I'm just saying. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm saying that. I'm, just, I'm, I'm like, there's the other hand of that, too, though. If you're meeting somebody who's like 35 and they've been divorced, you're like, what the fuck? I don't know. I would kind of be I'm like. Not, I, I know I would, more divorced people than I know married people at this point. I feel like at least the divorce is like, at some point, someone vetted this person. And they backed out for whatever reason. But at some point, they had uh, redeeming characteristics that <laughs> made you want to spend your life with them. Shooting. <laughs> Never noticed it just Yeah, I feel like you should get like a shooting. reference. As long as you get a reference from the ex-spouse. Like, I, listen, I'm not in those shoes. I feel like mm -hmm. if I was in the dating pool at my age which is also your age, more or less. Yeah, yeah. 
less, but let's, we don't need to get into that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I, <laughs> I feel like I would rather... I would give m more... No. I would have more of an... I would feel more bullish yes. on someone who had been married and divorced instead of never in a relationship that... Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah, yeah. Because you've been through it. I mean, if that's what you're looking for, if you're looking for a, a long-term partner. You, you, you committed at some point. You know probably how to do the dishes, take the garbage out, stuff like that. I mean, someone that's been living like a bachelor or a bachelorette for like 17 years or something like that. I don't mm -hmm. know. Long-term partner? It, it doesn't mean that they were living it up like crazy style, but... Living it up crazy style. <laughs> also, like, really? In 17 years, nobody said, like, I'm going to lock that down? Yeah. What's wrong with you? <laughs> I don't mean, like, what's wrong with you? I mean, like, what's wrong with you? Yeah, we're just... You're machine gunning chat right now. I know I'm catching a lot of minus twos, and I feel bad. <laughs> Hey, what the heck? What the heck? What the heck? I'm just non-target killed. Non-target killed. That target is chat. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, I'm married and this bit is great. Dude, it feels good because like no uh, demographic online is more oppressed than like married people with kids. So it feels <laughs> nice. It feels nice to finally fire back. Oh, there was a kid on my airplane and man cried because we crashed and died. Oh, oh, that must be so hard for you. You can't watch fucking Steven Universe on your iPad. How about, oh, there was a guy on my airplane who looked like fucking, uh, wait a second, he looked like Mark David Chapman. He got me all freaked out. The kid was watching kids' was cartoons on his damn iPad the entire flight, asking me how, who my favorite character in the universe of Gumball is. What if there's a guy on your plane who's not real, though? Mm, I true. I believe her, okay? It's kind of amazing <laughs> that they will, like, emergency land a plane with someone has a heart attack. Like, I, I think it's good, don't get me wrong, <laughs> but I feel like <laughs> we're, like, in 20 years, we're going to look back and be like, remember when we used to land planes in the event of a medical emergency? Like, now Delta just fucking makes you sign something when you get on. That's like, if you have cardiac arrest on board, we're sending that shit because we can't afford to turn around. Man, I'm just picturing the pilot, like, hearing it and just dive bombing the plane, like, instantly. <laughs> like, a heart attack. I mean, you guys are saying he's crazy, but I wouldn't be surprised if airlines did that. I, they don't give a fuck yeah, I'm not saying they should do it. I'm just saying... Maybe it's an it indictment. Yes, yeah. I, maybe it's an indictment of where society's at. That I'm like, oh, that's so nice they of don't. you. That's so nice of United to try to keep you alive if you almost die on their airplane. Yeah. I saw I saw a story where an airline bumped like half of a family from their flight so that stewardesses could take their seats. Okay, Corey, they're called flight attendants. Sorry, flight attendants. It's not could take 1963. Their seats. You're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> In my head, it is. I see what you're saying, Corey. Why couldn't they have bumped five single people instead, right? They shouldn't have bumped anybody, <laughs> ideally. Yeah. One time I was on one where they did the, is there a doctor on the plane thing. But I think it was somebody having, like, a, a basically a panic attack. Mm -hmm. Actually, no. One of the first flights I went on, sorry, I, I was lying to you. Um, one of the first flights I went on, we taxied out of the airport towards the runway, and then the woman mm. in front of me was freaking out. Oh, she no. was like, I don't know if I could do this. I don't know if I could do this. And we got out to the runway. Like, the flight attendant, or as Corey would call him, the stewardess, was kneeled, <laughs> was kneeled you, next to you. the lady and was like, are you okay? Because, like, we're about to take off. So you need to, like, be okay. And she was like, I'm not okay. I'm not okay. I need to get off the plane. So they taxied all the way back. Like the Oof. 20, 25 minutes back to the jetway and like let her off. And then, you know, spoilers, but like we landed safely in Chicago like 45 minutes later. So like everything ended up being okay. You think that when she got off though and saw the plane flying, she was, <laughs> she was kind of rooting for it to blow up in a huge fireball so she could be like, I told you. What if she was like, no, bring it back. I'm good now. Yeah. <laughs> Probably not. Yeah, but do you think that maybe there was like a little part of her that was like... Oh, absolutely. 
People, you think people so? definitely be thinking like that. Yes. <laughs> I can do this. Just for justification. I am I'm landing on my head like repeatedly. I am good enough. I'm smart enough. I can do this. <laughs> I am enough. Oh. This is the worst I've ever done in this event. I cannot get the YB to work. <laughs> we had a rainforest cafe in the local mall in uh, Philadelphia. Outside of Philly. Yeah, outside of Philly. Yeah, like took up do. like a corner near the food court and mm -hmm. like you could just watch it slowly get more and more dilapidated like yeah. Over, oh yeah over the years and like people just stopped eating there because they're like wait i i don't want to pay extra money to like sit next to like bird sounds well, and like, dripping it's water. expensive like it's not <laughs> like <laughs> yeah oh this is also our fault but like our kid was asleep when we got there but like you got to uh -huh. book your reservation like way in advance so like we don't know when our kid's gonna sleep in august when we're booking this shit in like april mm. so yeah. Like our kid is asleep in her stroller and then like every 30 seconds they just walk by and go volcano and there's like a little like brownie dessert with like sparklers coming out of it and then the, every single table happy happy birthday from rainforest cafe da, 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 da. And then the fucking things like got liquid nitrogen pouring out of it and dry ice and shit like that and my kid is Freaking the fuck out. That's so funny. <laughs> it sucked so much ass. <laughs> oh man. Just so yeah, you know, those servers brutal. live for that. I believe it. To ruin your fucking night. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Fuck me for being at the Rainforest Cafe, I guess. With my kid, everyone knows that's a restaurant you should only go to if you're. An adult <laughs> <laughs> who loves seeing a, a zebra do this every every thirty seconds or so. Did you just say they had a zebra in the fucking rainforest cafe? I don't know, bro. We were sitting in the middle of the restaurant. We weren't near any <laughs> of the features. He booked early. He didn't even get the good seats. What? Well, that's when you book early. You're already late, man. We got that's and true. This restaurant was actually really good, but you're probably not going to take me up on the recommendation. Hey, if you ever find yourself in Disney's Hollywood Studios, make sure you go to uh, Woody's Roundup Rodeo in Toy Story Land. It was it was pretty good, but the my wife got she reserved as early as we were able to reserve. Our reservation time was like nine fifteen p.m. What the fuck? We were like the last people in the restaurant. Oh man. And the poor server, man. Like once every they, they got like a loop of audio they play. Once every fifteen minutes he had to put on sunglasses and a party hat and do T Rex arms and say, Oh, oh no. I'm I'm party Saurus. I'm party Saurus. Oh no. <laughs> Fucking God, dude. And he got it like I looked at him and I, he was like I looked in his eyes and I know that he was like, this guy gets it. And I was like, this guy gets it too. But he was, you could not tell from the rest of his face. He was smiling and playing the part. Damn. That sucks. <laughs> you got to have fun with it, right? Oh, Other, yeah. Otherwise, like, is Florida an at-will employment state? Oh, absolutely. Because <laughs> yeah. I, I was <laughs> thinking. No way they're not. I was trying to figure out why in California all the Disneyland workers were grumpy and in Florida they were all happy. And I think I came to the conclusion that in California they can't fire you without cause. Absolutely. Mm. <laughs> and in Florida, if, and if a customer's ever like my waiter didn't smile enough, they could just be like, see you later. Good luck in Orlando, brother. Was Florida the state that fired the kid for getting his hair cut in the parking lot? I can see it. <laughs> Yeah, so yeah, like most states are uh, at will. Yeah, America's fucked. Really? Man. Yeah, yeah, America. Yeah. America's real fucked up. I didn't know that. I thought in California it was like once you got the job, like you own the business. I'm I'm sure like, you looked at me funny. You're, you're fired. Have the employees ever thought about starting their own Disney World? <laughs> you know, it's a good idea. You know? <laughs> I think if they pulled their money together, they could do it. Nobody was saying anything, so I just had to say the first thing that came to mind. You guys <laughs> fucked me up so much. Oh, no. <laughs> they don't have enough money? Well, maybe if they invented animation, they would have enough money, okay? So all I need to do is build a time machine and go back to, like, 1980 or whenever Walt Disney was alive. 
So how'd you, uh, what was your like ranking of the parks? I feel like I have a slightly atypical ranking. And I will say we were with three kids. That's why I have okay. Epcot last. Uh, okay. if, it, if, it was, if it was an adult trip with no kids, I think Epcot would be easy one or number two. For us, I would say Hollywood Studios was number one. It had. I feel like that is the newest stuff, right? It had, in my opinion, the highest quality rides. Um, I, I enjoyed all the Star Wars rides that we went on, especially Rise of the Resistance. And I thought the park itself was just... It was nice and, and very walkable relative to the other ones. Mm -hmm. Number two, I'd probably put Magic Kingdom because it's got a lot of classic stuff. It just feels yeah, yeah. like uh, it feels like that is Disney World. Number three, Animal Kingdom. I really liked Kilimanjaro Safaris, the ride that nearly killed you in the line. Yep, yep. Um, I thought the food that we had at Animal Kingdom was also kind of goaded, which was very, yeah. it was very uneven at Disney, but Animal Kingdom kept it locked up. Uh, and then fourth, I would put Epcot. Fair. Uh, where'd you eat at Animal Kingdom? We ate in... What kind of food? For lunch, we ate at... Hang on, it's coming to me. They're all named fucking stupid stuff. <laughs> yeah. I wouldn't remember the names probably, but I remember like the, the, the theme of the it was movie. it was the character buffet. So it was like um it was called Tusker's Tusker's African restaurant, I think. Tusker okay. House African restaurant. And then for I never went to a dinner we one. ate at the Rainforest Cafe. So that I'm I'm gotcha. keeping that out. <laughs> All I know is I got a I got a Euro while I was there. Okay, yeah. It was like, it was like a Moroccan restaurant. Uh, it was fucking great. I was stunned. I couldn't believe how good it was. I was, was very, definitely I was thrilled with that. When we were there, some of the food, I was like, this has no business being this good. A yeah. lot of the food at, in the Disney resorts, oh, I was like, it's crazy how bad this is for a, a operation that gets everything else like yeah. perfect. Dude, the poutine in Disney Springs was the most <laughs> offensively bad thing I've ever been served in my life. How do you even make bad poutine? It's I'll like tell you. You take, uh, like, microwaved french fries. That's oh, bad. well, okay. Yeah, that's yeah. like And then the you worst, take a bunch step. of... Uh, Shredded take, cheddar like, cheese? Uh, blocks of mozzarella cheese. Okay. And you that's just microwave it on it. Oh, and that's uh, that's pretty much it. You could also get they call it Italian poutine. Same thing, but they dump a bunch of red sauce on it. Uh, <laughs> I used to get horrific. that shit at from like the pizza place. <laughs> it, just, it was like, really bad. Dude, that's fries. how I felt in Epcot when there was a Canada section and it was like try Canadian ham and cheese soup. I was like, well, brother, what the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> I've never heard of that shit before in my life. Get a twelve dollar mostly Canadian. <laughs> They just thought of something white people might like and made a Canadian. <laughs> I was yeah. thinking of the, it would be a funny bit. Guy from Canada who spends all day at Epcot at the Canada Pavilion. Yeah. Where they, yeah, yeah. they inexplicably have like a lumberjack set up and then... <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was very funny uh, my last time at Epcot. That like, as you're walking around, they have like a little, little vendor selling uh, alcohol. Yes. And other beverages from like whatever area you're in. Mm -hmm. But all of them would have like, you know, a bunch of things that, you know, work out for whatever area you're in, but then also White Claw. <laughs> it, just, it was just so out of place to me every time. It was so funny. White Claw's good, that's why. I got a lot of White Claws that Epcot trip. I was literally, I was watching the calories. I was laughing because we booked this place. It's like inside the castle at Magic Kingdom. And uh -huh. they were like, you, you're lucky. You got the fireworks seating. So you're in the castle when they shoot off the fireworks, okay? That's sick. So I was like, I'm not really that into the pageantry of Disney. Um, hmm. I'm more into the... But the, I was like, that'll be cool. I'm not even a fireworks guy, but to be like that close to it will be cool. And then yeah, they yeah. sat us, and like 10 minutes later, the fireworks started. And the shit is frosted glass. <laughs> like you can't see anything. Oh, no. Like I, all I, I could see like explosions of like diffused light outside of the the window, but I like oh, I couldn't make out any sucks. shapes or anything like that. I'm like, why? What are they That's doing, awful. man? I get yeah, that they want it. They want it to be like stained glass for the people looking at the castle, but like, oh, it's, man. <laughs> yeah, what the hell? You just got fucking laugh. got your ass. It was pretty funny. God.
Yeah, I'm just not. I'm just not much of a theme park guy. I think that's why I like Epcot, because that's mostly just walking around and like eating food and looking at things and going, "Oh, that's nice." Isn't that the most theme of the theme park, though? No, nah, usually it's strapping yourself into like a roller coaster that shoots you into outer space at 130 miles an hour. <laughs> that's an that's the amusement part of the park, not the theme park. Uh, I hate it. Uh, I just I'm not a roller coaster guy at all. I love roller coasters, man. I hate I, I think I'm becoming one. And it's fucked up because I hate heights. Okay, that is crazy to me. Yeah. I'm not a roller coaster guy, but I think that as I've gotten older, like I used to be really scared of flying. As I flew more, Same. I got acclimatized to it. Uh, yeah, and I, yeah. didn't, I didn't think like, oh, this is my last day on Earth if I have a flight tomorrow. I think the same thing is happening in, uh, with respect to roller coasters. And as crazy as it sounds, I think one of the mantras I tell myself when I get on is who cares if I die? <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's how I get through flights. That's how I get through flights. I'm, I'm like, you know, when I was 20 and I took a flight, I'm like, I'm going to fucking die. It's going to be the worst thing in my life. And now when I get on an airplane, I'm like, who fucking cares? I'm just a speck in the in this vast <laughs> infinite universe. I should just be so I should be so important <laughs> to die in a plane crash. I'll probably die of like heart disease in my 70s or 80s or something like that. Don't flatter yourself thinking you're getting the hero's death. And then I put on a movie and I fucking Jesus live. Christ. That's and that's how I feel on a roller coaster except when I went to Disney World, it was with like my nieces. So that time it was more like if my eight year old niece is getting on Space Mountain, I'm not going to be like, see you at the exit, sister. Like, I got to. <laughs> <laughs> I'm too scared. I'm too scared. Because <laughs> the kids react like the, as a reflection of the way you react too. So I was like, yeah, Space Mountain, Space Mountain ain't shit. And then in the ride photo, I'm like seeing God. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, hey, at least on a plane, if, if that shit goes down, you're dying quick. A roller coaster, you might get fucking ground up. You got it backwards, man. On what? a roller coaster, how are you going to die on a roller coaster not instantaneously? I saw, I saw a video the other day where, like, the, the, the cable that pulls the cart snapped. And okay, fucking listen, I don't want to hear, hear all that. I don't want to hear all that. But you in a plane, they could be like, you know, you could go through turbulence and then the seatbelt light turns on, you're 35,000 feet up, and then the turbulence just keeps getting worse. And then a, a, you just hear the plane go like, and then you start, and you still got, now you're at 27,000 feet. You got like another eight minutes of descent until you crash into oh, the terrain. Yeah. Like that would be, you, you'll, spiritually, yeah. that would kill me, man. You'll probably you pass out. You sounded for a second there like you went in the fucking glizzy overdrive. Anyway. Good gaming. Well uh well gamed. Oh. We did it. Uh, good stuff. We made it through. Probably next week yeah, we'll have a lot more people if I had to guess. Next week there will for sure be more people. <laughs> <laughs> for right. sure. Justin, and you, you know have what? A... we're gonna have a ton of people Friday too. too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hopefully oh. people Live by their word. Yep. Hopefully they live in general, people. <laughs> yeah, I hope everyone's alive. Yep. All right. Goodbye. <laughs> Goodbye. Goodbye. Two-man London next week, guaranteed. It won't even be me. It'll just be Justin and Corey. I feel a sense of solidarity with the, the ever-dwindling London participants and the ever-dwindling London audience on YouTube. Like, on Twitch, it does okay. On YouTube, like every video gets like 15% less views than the London video before it. I feel like we're increasingly just, it's becoming like a private event. <laughs> it's just the, the rider dies on, on both sides of this damn screen. That's how you know we're doing it for the love of the game, man. You can't tell, for a couple of things from today's stream. You can, you can eat as soon as your food comes to the table. You don't have to wait for me. If you insist on paying the bill, you can have it. If I insist on paying the bill, I expect that you're going to allow me to have it. I fucking guarantee. I'm not saying that lady was rooting for the plane to crash after she got off. All I'm saying is that I bet if it crashed, if it crashed, a part of her would have been like, see? I bet she would have turned to someone and been like, see? Who's the crazy one now? 
There would have been a little part of, she outwardly would have been like, no, my bags. But inwardly, she would have been like, I fucking knew it and nobody listened to me. Nobody ever listens to me and look what it got him. Anyway, I will send you over. And what's the deal with liquid? Thank you. Finally, somebody's meeting me in the middle on the liquid take. Solids, I get them. You, you, you pick up a brick, you put it down, it's not going anywhere. Gas, it's all around us. Liquid, what are you doing? If it, not, if it weren't for the glass, where would you be? You wouldn't be anywhere. If you weren't adhering to the size and shape of the container in which you embodied, you don't, if you don't stand for nothing liquid, you'll fucking fall for anything, brother. Hey, I thought of a new bit last night, by the way, when I was taking out the recycling. Guy who uh, filibusters his city council, and it would go, it would be really Canadian guy, I would grow a mustache for this bit, and it would go like this. Greetings, congressmen's and women's. Everybody knows the cost of living crisis is getting crazy. Inflation has made everything more expensive. Food, housing, and even beer. But you know what hasn't risen with inflation? The amount of money that you get when you return a bottle to the liquor store. It's been 10 cents per bottle ever since I was a little kid. And now I'm a fully grown man. It's really cutting into my in income, especially with the government now recommending you only drink five or six beers a day. How am I supposed to sustain my family on 50 or 60 cents of bottle returns? So I, I think if you workshop that enough, you could come up with something good. I gotta, I gotta write it a little bit, but... Workshop this a little, it could work. There's potential there. He's right, though? Well, yeah, but like, you pay for the... You pay the... Re, the re, you, you pay a deposit on the bottle and then you get the deposit back when you take it to the store. That's the, the, over, the, the outwardly absurd part is, of it is if they raise the bottle return refund, they would also be raising the amount of price you pay for it in the first place, which I think is what makes it a good bit. Anyway, I'll send you over to my live stream. Enjoy, enjoy. Can we watch Glizzy Overdrive together? No, we watched it yesterday. We did not watch it together yesterday, but we don't need to watch it again. But I, I learned, what I learned is that apparently, I don't know which platform it is, but a bunch of people, they just go live, just random people go live on internet and then they read out the donation and react to the donation just like AI and that's a thing right now. And I understood what you guys were talking about yesterday, saying like, oh, Kate is going to be the, Kate, are you going to be the AI streamer? And I said, what are you talking about? And now I understand. People just, uh, oh, flower, mm, smells nice. Something, I don't know, just random thing. And when people donate something, they go, they just react to it like AI or NPC, I guess. NPC, whatever, NPC AI, same thing. Dude, the jaw, the C, the return on it. <laughs> lolly, 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 ghibli, 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 Olivia Munn. Lolly, lolly, lolly. When will you get your words right? The glizzly, the glizzy sucker makes so much cash. 7%. Thank you so much for 160 gl glizzy. <laughs> I couldn't make that sound that he makes though. <laughs> yeah, don't make that sound. Yeah, I don't even know how. Even if I want to, I can't. I don't know how to make that sound. <laughs> That's all I can do. He's the true glizzer gobbler. gobbler. That's why I don't approach the god. Please stop, K, for your own sake. Oh my god. Library and thumbnail. Oh my gosh. He's my new idol. It's the glizzly suck sucking guy, dude. I go, ah, look. It's the Kate stream clip where she tries to mimic the glizzly guy. 
Ah, bah, 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 bah. Oh, but look, I tried to stop her. I told her, I told her on the chat. <laughs> I already got ya. I already got ya. She does love horny thumbnails. So true. <laughs> oh my god. The day three of me surviving on internet. Everyone goes, can we watch the glizzies? Can we show, can we watch the glizzies together? We're not. We saw it on day one. We're not going to see it on day three again. You better give me Gleezy if you want to see Gleezy reaction. Gleezy stream Sonko? I don't think it would be a good idea because I don't think I can make that noise. That's all I can... I don't know how he does it. That's all I can do. Gang 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 gang. Kate, I'm trying to Apple. Please stop making the Gleezy noise. <laughs> Gleezy Overdrive! <laughs> Thank you very much for 160 Gleezies! <laughs> Gleezy Power 7%! <laughs> Gleezy Overdrive! <laughs> there you go. Now, now pay up, bitches. At least put the video on the screen if you're watching it. I am not watching it, Dan Jr. Like I said, I'm not gonna watch it again for the third time. My favorite part is the chat message that scrolls by says, Oh, not again. <laughs> oh, not again. Oh, no. Why would you clip it? I thought you were doing PB. Kate, I'm trying to Apple. Please stop making the Gleezy noise. <laughs> Gleezy Overdrive! <laughs> Thank you very much for 160 Gleezies! <laughs> Gleezy Power 7%! <laughs> Gleezy Overdrive! <laughs> <laughs> Yo, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. I gotta say, I gotta say that's pretty good. Honestly, I'm proud of myself. <laughs> Slash moment me? Oh my goodness, that is not slash moment worthy. Do not do that for free. I did not. Lowly Nickel gave me a gift sub. How much is 160 glizzies worth? Is that $16? I don't know. <laughs> is it? <laughs> I heard Ryan doing it. Ryan, I did it and I think I topped your reaction. Let me hear your, your sound. It, here, come over here. You listen to it. Put 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 this on. Are you ready? Yeah. Kate, I'm trying to Apple. Please stop making the Gleezy noise. <laughs> Gleezy Overdrive. <laughs> Thank you very much for 160 Gleezies. <laughs> Gleezy Power 7%. <laughs> Glizzy <laughs> Overdrive! I think it's pretty good. Yeah? I think it's pretty good. Better than yours? <clears throat> I think we both have to work on the... <laughs> <laughs> you sound like you're drowning. I think we both got a good... I think your NPC dialogue is better. Thank you so much for 150 Glizzies. Gang gang. <laughs> But then we both gotta work on that. <laughs> that's pretty good. That's that's the best so far, I think. But we both got. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we got the robot. Oh my god! I could not even read what library just said. Jesus Christ! Do you? Do you think before you type, buddy? And there he goes, never to be heard from again. Took my bike to the lake. Brought my shovel, brought my rake. Took my boy to the swing. Let him swing, let them ring. Bought my friends Italian beef. Make them fart and make them queef. Abraham Lincoln was governor here. Only a 
Do you know what I'm talking about? Sufjan Stevens? 